Yo, people always ask me what kind of frames I'm rocking. I've been rocking Caddis for a couple years. They make amazing progressive readers, which I wear. Also, they make sunglass readers, anti-glare, anti-smudge coating, anti-scratch, and anti-aging. That's why I look mad young when I wear them. I'm just kidding. Um, but they make amazing frames. Caddis, so stoked to have you guys part of the podcast. You can go to caddislife.com slash Toby10 and get $10 off your first purchase. Stoked. Thank you, Caddis. Welcome to the fam. Yo, yo, Liquid Death. Thank you so much for hydrating all my guests. Taking care of me and my family and my friends. Love your water. Love your brand. Love what you stand for. Love you give back to the community. If you want to learn more about Liquid Death and how it started, listen to episode 115 with the co-founder, owner, and creator of Liquid Death, Mike Cesario. Just a punk rock skateboarding kid from Delaware with a dream. It's an incredible story, incredible journey. They have now blessed me with my own code. So if you go liquiddeath.com slash Toby, you get free shipping on any items you order from liquiddeath.com. Thank you so much, Liquid Death. Death to plastic, murder your thirst, stay hydrated. You know H2O saves lives. You, I'm Welcome to the One Life One Chance podcast. Please be quiet. I'm your host, Toby <laughs> Morris. To the right, I got my brother from another mother, Mr. Chappelle Lacey's here hanging out with me today. I appreciate your time. Uh-huh, You're a busy always. man. You're always traveling and always. doing your shows. And then sitting in front of me, a friend of many, 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 many years. And we crossed paths a couple of years because um, he's got an office by my barbershop. Please welcome to the podcast, Mr. Gabe Supporter. Yeah, I tried to start a barbershop there as a competition to work out. So I just <laughs> <laughs> started a music office. Do you get your haircut there, though? No. Yeah, yeah well, okay. that's where I started. But uh, okay. yeah, but then Shane went downstairs. So that's the cup by. We Shout got out different, to the different guys. Yeah, the cup by. Shout well, out. Thank you for being here, man. Yeah, thank you for having me, dude. Really appreciate it. I'm trying to think that when we met. Uh, like, I know we toured together. On our, I think our Go Cycle in 2001, but I don't know what the shows where we played back then were, or how we met. Or oh, bro, I saw you so many times. I think before you met, I saw you at Cornell High, I saw you at CBs, um, but I think we we met like at a VFW show in Jersey. That makes talked. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are the shows back then too, man. That was the shit. I love how everybody mentions Coney Island High on y- here. Yeah. Oh yeah, they everybody, do. Every time yeah. I do your pod, someone <laughs> mentions Coney Island. High. Dude, that venue was really special. Oh, it was yeah. yeah. And now it's like a Chipotle or something around there. Some it's bullshit. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> New York is so weird now, man. It's not the same. He finally got to come. Chipotle came to New York for the first time. Yeah. And I was trying to walk around, maybe showing some things, but there's really nothing to show him anymore. Lower East Side, baby. Yeah, he's obsessed with Lower East Side, but it's not the same Lower East Side. Oh, it's not. I just feel like, I, I, I hate saying that because I just feel like such an old guy I saying know, that. Dude. <laughs> oh, back in my day, New York was cool. <laughs> but when I was walking around there with my son, who was 18, he loved it. It's like all young hipsters. It's a whole new generation. Yeah. He loved that energy. It's just so different. You know? Yeah. I think that when we were growing up, it was like so important to have places to convene at and find people that were like you. And that was what's special about New York. Yeah. And I feel like now kids do that on the internet. So it's like not like something that, that's so scarce as it that's was. A good, that's yeah. a good point, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's a very solid point. You know, where they have to even go anywhere or do anything. They just show you life on there. And yeah, exactly. And now have interaction. Yeah, but it was interesting trying to find my spots and my spots are gone and waiting in line for a vegan slice of pizza. Just that one <laughs> spot, it was like a crazy oh, line. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just felt old being there, but such great memories there, of course. Um, <laughs> but you were born there. You were born in Ur- Uruguay? I was born I was born in South America. So Came here. Say it again. Let me hear you say that. Uruguay. Did I say it right? <laughs> that, you said it great, yeah. <laughs> Let me hear you say it. No, you didn't say it right before he got here. I know, I was practicing. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he literally was practicing. Well, the one part, the monotibiado. Mon- <laughs> that you butchered, bro. <laughs> okay, how do I say it? How do I say it? Montevideo. 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 Sorry. Yeah, like uh, like a video, you know, oh, like okay. video video of Monty. So but funny. but bro, there's a great there's a great Uruguay. I had a moment on The Simpsons once where Homer uh, he, he 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 got a globe for the first time. He's like, look oh, at great. this country. You are gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. And and I always got made fun of at school because I had like really I had a really big Jufro and uh-huh. wow. I, I, it was bleach blonde, so people called me Sideshow Bob. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so I had the you're gay Sideshow Bob, and there was something else too that I that I had from The Simpsons. <laughs> Yeah. So how long did you live there for? Oh, and then my name, Gabe Saporta. You know, uh, in Spanish, my name is amazing, Gabriel Saporta. You know, it's like it sounds sounds yeah, nice, but it sounds dope. Yeah, in English, I just it's just gay supporter. So I grew up in a time <laughs> that, I, I grew up at a time when it wasn't cool to be a gay supporter. You know, <laughs> <laughs> holy crap! I didn't even think about that. Crazy. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> 
So how long did you live there before you came to her? I was four when I came here. So I'm, okay. I'm yeah. I, I mean, I, you know, I have great memories there, and and I went back there a lot as a kid. I, I you know, I'm grateful my parents. They took, they really made an effort to like. Oh, that's awesome. Have me still have roots there, you know, because th- th- my parents came here by themselves, and they didn't have any other family here, just yeah. us. We came on a tourist visa, and we never left, so we were wow. here legally for years. Um, and kind of like, you know, my parents tried to build a life undocumented, like living in Queens in a one bedroom apartment. My parents took like a corner of the living room and made it their bedroom. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. What yeah, part yeah. of Queens? Flushing. Sick. I used yeah. to live there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And why New York? Why'd you guys end up here? There. there? I th- I, th- I think my dad actually went to Canada first. He was looking. So my dad was a doctor in Uruguay, um, and Uruguay was like under military dictatorship at the time. And I mm-hmm. think like he 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 says that he remembers like doctors would go out after like you know they would they would take cigarette breaks and go outside back when doctors smoked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so crazy to think about. It's funny, right? <laughs> <laughs> so taking cigarette breaks funny. outside and outside they would just talk about how they can make money because they couldn't make money as doctors and they had they had like yeah. socialized medicine and it was just it was just a you know it was a, it was a weird time I think in the seventies in all of Latin America. So my dad just wanted to have have op- really to give opportunity to his kids. Yeah. He wanted his kid to have a chance to be a rock star. So he's yeah. like, that's awesome. <laughs> no. that's, so I, I he was very disappointed by that. Oh, you know, can you imagine <laughs> imagine moving across the world so your kids can get an education? Your your dad's the kids like, hey dad, can I borrow twenty five hundred bucks to buy an old Ford so I can go on tour? <laughs> <laughs> So you have siblings, you have uh, brothers and sisters, what do you got? I got a younger brother, Ricky, bomb shelter. Remember, he did all the bomb shelter oh, shows. Oh, wow, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So coming to New York and then you go to school, you grew up in Queens? Grew up in Queens. And um, so I'm, I'm Jewish, so um, I went there, like, I went to a Jewish school, which was like, uh, it was, you know, any, any private school is like going to be like fairly upper middle class, but it was like me and like two kids that escaped the kremlin their families escaped the kremlin that were like the scholarship cases at the school yeah. so yeah so i was like it was like the poor immigrant kids at the upper middle class jewish school in queens um and then wow. i moved to jersey when i was 11 and then jersey was even like it's, i went to the same school they had, they had one in jersey too and then i was like the queen's kid with a gold chain and a mullet uh, going to the to the to the to the, to the suburb school in Jersey, yeah. Yeah. so I had a problem fitting in my whole life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they called me Party Patrol pants. Is that what they called? <laughs> yeah, you? I had I had like the Z Cavaruchis, like really like bright pants. I don't know. I don't wow. know. Everyone kind of wore that in Queens, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah, Queens is different than Jersey for sure. Yeah. And so, uh, so you're in Jersey. So, you, um, how was it going to school? How was it growing up there? Um, it was. You know, it was like uh, a culture shock compared to Queens. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I felt like, you know, you have to think like I, I had like some pretty drastic moves like f- before I was even 13. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I think that's really what drew me to music is because I didn't feel like a sense of belonging anywhere I was. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people that get drawn to music, especially punk rock, have that feeling, too. So, I, I, yep. I you know, I got yeah. into music very, very early. Yeah. Yeah, and how how would you get exposed to punk rock? How how that happen? It's funny, you know. I was into hip hop first. I grew up in Queens. I remember yeah. like dudes would sell like bootleg tapes on the street, and mm-hmm. I, I had my dad buy me, I think, uh, um, like an NWA tape when I was young. Sick. And they would make like these mixes. So I, and they had like you know everything on there. So it was like early '90s, and I was like really into like. Um, Tribe Called Quest was like Ooh. my first love. Like the Low End Theory is one of the first CDs I bought. Great. Damn. <clears throat> and um, and so I was really into punk rock, and then I found Public Enemy, and like I don't know why I always just had a very like contrarian, revolutionary, like fuck the system kind of attitude. And at like, a young and age, that, and at that's a young age, yeah, because yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I didn't feel like the system worked for me, you know. So um, so yeah, I was I you know I really connected with that. Um, and then I remember seeing Nirvana on TV when I was 11 years old. And I think like that, that's when I got in, like I, ha- I, I liked, I remember I liked rock and roll before that, but like yeah. in a very cursory kind of way, like I remember I had the Guns N' Roses record and like yeah. Poison, but it was just like, kind it of felt, given. yeah, it just felt a little like it was cool. Like, you know, but it felt like feigned aggression in a way, you know, mm. oh. but then, but then like you, f- you, when I remember seeing Nirvana and it was like the video was so dark. You know, I don't know if you remember, it was like a dark video and there was like, you know, spotlights and stuff. And it felt like a little creepy in a way that was like. Which was a heart shaped box? No, it smells like Teen Spirit. Oh, it smells like. Okay. Yeah, the, the first single. And it was like, well, I guess it wasn't the first one. First one and never mind. But, um, but yeah. And then, and then I think the other thing about Nirvana too is like all these other bands, they were like, it was very like 
glamorous, right? It yeah. Was like, it was like made up. Everything looked expensive, like pyro, hair, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And Nirvana just looked like they just were shopping at the same vintage stores that I was shopping at and like looked like they could be your neighbors, you know, like the whole yeah. garage band idea. You can do this too. Yeah. And I think that that's what inspired me to get into music. Like, oh, I can actually do this, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And then I bought, a, I got a bass for my bar mitzvah at 13 and uh, that's been downhill ever since. <laughs> <laughs> So your first band was Humble Beginnings? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. That was my first like actual band. I was I, I got my bass to join a band that some kids in my school were starting. They're like, we need a bass player. I'm like, oh, well, I'll just get a bass for my bar mitzvah and then we'll, <laughs> we'll play bass. And it was like, like kind of like, we we actually all went to this arts camp. I remember I went to this camp called Bucks Rock and we were like really into Dinosaur Jr. at the time. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, you tried to hate on me for that one. Oh, Dinosaur's <laughs> great, bro. I didn't know anything about. I heard this once. I heard the songs. I was okay. I know that band. I just don't know the songs. If I know the this, whatever, keep going. <laughs> yeah, so it was like a little bit more like, I guess you would call it like a little bit more like the, the kids I was in a band with were like kind of like like real musicians, like jazz kind of kids yeah. doing like prog rock. They like they like Dinosaur Jr., but those kids also liked Rush. Like I, I don't like Rush, you know, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like, you know, so that was like our, our how we overlapped. Um, and I was like 13. The band didn't even have a name. Uh, but then then I started going to shows. And then when I started going to shows, I started meeting other kids. And, and, and Humble Beginnings, the kid from Humble Beginnings was actually in my school. Um, and I remember like I went to see Nirvana when I was 14. And I had, wow, wore, I wore like a, and a, the Breeders opened up. And, oh um, my God! What a concert! Sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and and uh, and uh, I think I wore a British shirt to school the next day, and then we got talking, and then we started. A, we we decided to start a band. And, wow! Yeah. Damn, yeah. I didn't even see Nirvana back then. She saw me at fourteen. That's amazing. Yeah, I almost didn't make it too because I forgot my tickets at my house. Uh-huh. So oh. my friend's mom was driving, and she t- she should t- turn the minivan back around at the. <laughs> At the Holland Tunnel, bro. We're almost inside the Holland Tunnel. I'm like, oh shit, Damn. all my tickets. We so we made it back. Yeah. So what, was that off the Nevermind album? Just to... no, that was in Euro Tour. In Euro Tour. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It was '94. Damn. Yeah. Sick. So what did you want to do when you were in school? And were you good in school? It's funny. I did really poorly in high school because I went to like a small Jewish school, and I was like an outcast kid, and like I was just like I looked different. I just like a troublemaker. So when you're in a small school, you kind of get judged for your character, I think, and that affects your grades. So I had really terrible grades, um, but I did have my testing was good, surprisingly. So my, I think my parents were like I did well on my SATs and that stuff. So I ended up going to Rutgers. Um, and that's you met the Midtown guys, right? Yes. Yeah, so it's it's funny. It's so funny because. My parents were getting divorced, so I, I got into a, a good school, Wesleyan, which is like where like all like the hipster indie rock. I think I think like Vampire Weekend started at Wesleyan okay. or some shit. You know, it's like the hipster indie yeah, rockers, yeah, right? For sure, yep. It's like you know, um, and I couldn't afford to go there because um, my parents were getting divorced, and even though my parents made money, I didn't, I didn't, so I didn't qualify for a scholarship. So, but, but I couldn't go to Wesleyan. So I just ended up going to Rutgers, the state school. I was like, whatever, I don't give a fuck. And I was like, <laughs> fine with it anyway, because a bunch of dudes that I knew from other local bands, uh, were going there too. I'm like, oh, we're all going there. Like Rob Hayt, the drummer was already at Rutgers. Me, Tyler and Heath were all going to Rutgers. Um, Tyler and Heath were in this other band, Nor Fast. Rob was in a band called the Royalties. And we all played shows together, like VFW shows in, 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 in with Humble Beginnings in, in Jersey. Yeah. And I'm like, let's, let's just all start a band. Like, we'll just do it for fun. We're going to school. Like I got kicked out of Humble Beginnings too, which was like a really like devastating thing for me. Like a band that I started and named. What? I got kicked out of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. How does that even happen? Um, yeah, the, I, I just got a phone call one day and they're like, you're out of the band. I'm like, uh, you what? started and named it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Man. And then I got kicked out. And I think the reason I got kicked out was because I was the bass player of Humble Beginners. I didn't sing. Okay. Um, and it, I was kind of like the Pete Wentz of Humble Beginnings. It's like, it's like everyone, you know how people, some people like if they don't follow up, they're like, oh, Pete Wentz is a singer for Fall Boy. Right? Yeah. Like it was that, like I was yeah. outgoing. I love people. Like I, I booked the shows. Like I, yeah. I did the business, you know, I wrote and, and, uh, and, and, and then like, and it started off the first time I should have seen it is like the singer was just like, yeah, I want to write my own songs. I don't want to write with you anymore. I'm like, okay. And then, and then next thing, then they got another guitar player. Then it was like, it was like a mutiny, you know, it was like you're mm. out of the band. I'm like, okay, wow. So I was like, fuck this. Oh, and I had taken a year off before going to college. I deferred for a year to go on tour with Humble Beginnings. Like I booked okay. a tour for us all across the country Dang. and then I got kicked out and I'm like, fuck this. I'm just going to school. Would be nothing without you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so, and I remember, like, I remember going to see the show, and it's funny, oh. Eben, Eben uh, who ended up playing Saves a Day. Yes, Eben, yeah. Yeah, he was playing Humble Beginnings. So he replaced me in Humble Beginnings. He, he was a much better bass player than I was, and I was kind of bummed. I'm like, oh, they got a really good bass player. Um, <laughs> but then I went to see the the first show that he played at, and he fucked up this part. There's, <sighs> there's like this bass solo part in one of Humble Beginnings songs, uh -huh. and he just fucked it up, and I was like, secretly, like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> That's so funny. Yo, I have a fun fact about Pete Wentz. Dan Smith did a tattoo of Gabe on Pete Wentz. Yeah, that's true. Fact. That's true. That so Pete Wentz has yeah, a tattoo did, of him. How did Deep Dive Lacey not find that Dan one? Smith told me to mention on this podcast. Did he yeah. wow. talk about it? Yeah, yeah Dan yeah. told me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's awesome. That's so yeah, dope. so Pete Wentz has a tattoo of Gabe on his body. Yeah. That's crazy. That's a whole different story. Okay. <laughs> Evan was Save Zay's first bass player? No, he came afterwards. This guy Sean was the first. Evan was player. awesome. Oh, okay, okay. Sean and I don't know why Sean was in mouthpiece, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Okay. Right, all right. So Sean was in mouthpiece, and he passed away, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Passed away of cancer or something like that. Cancer. Yes. No, that. Yes. yes. But not. That's not, he was. But he left Saves the Day, I think, before he passed away. This was afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, I could, I could be wrong. No. Um. All right. So you're in Rutgers. Ruck Records. So I'm at Ruck. I'm a Rutgers. Rutgers. <laughs> <laughs> I and played shows here before. Wait, great shows here back in the day. Dude, he yeah, really brought out the accent right there. <laughs> no, but that's, yeah, it's New York accent. Rutgers, yeah. Rutgers, it's Jersey. They had good shows here, like <laughs> college shows. It's so crazy uh, hearing you talk like that. Played it with uh, the Bostones. Yeah. 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 yeah that, that sounds about right. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, so we started Rutgers, and I was like, I was like, you know, I'm just going to do music for fun. I'm going to go to school. And then suddenly, I have like a 4-0 at Rutgers. I have like straight A's. And Damn. and because because I'm just taking classes I want to take right so I'm taking like a lot of philosophy classes I'm taking the stuff I'm like generally interested in um, and the other thing I knew about myself too and was, I think it's like I wasn't diagnosed with ADD at the time but now that I've been diagnosed with ADD it's like my brain just doesn't work in the morning so it's cool like I just my brain just didn't function all morning wow. at school so but I just knew I my brain didn't work in the morning so i didn't have a class before one o'clock you know oh, so shit. yeah so i just did my schedule i'm just like one o'clock classes i would i would be in class to like eight o'clock um but i liked what i was learning and 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 when you're in a class of 400 people the, the teacher doesn't care what you look like you know yeah so so i just did well um and then i had like i was like nominated for like the dean's award for excellence or something wow. and i got that so and i actually submitted a midtown song for my application you have to like write something about like your experience so i wrote and talked about this experience i wrote the song it was like a demo i submitted on a cassette tape um that hadn't even come out and i won the dean's award for excellence so my dad who you know my dad's an immigrant right who like all that immigrants want for the kids is that they do well in school get a good yeah. education yeah. so imagine my dad like his whole life comes to america struggles like tries to get his kid in a good school the kid's doing badly his whole time Finally, kids doing well, and then I'm like, "Hey, Dad, I just got signed to this indie label in California. I'm dropping out of school." <laughs> was so that, I, I did three semesters at Rutgers. I had a four O Q. Right, every every semester, I'm like, I'm like, "Bye, Dad." <laughs> I'm like, "I'm out." Was that drive through? Yeah. Drive through. That was drive through. Wow. Yeah. Man. First of all, what a solid find for your ADD mm -hmm. to realize. Oh, I'm not good in the morning, and then yeah. like, yeah. I, I don't think I've ever heard it like. You know, you uh, people accommodating to that. You know, people, yeah. Because I feel like they kind of just try, try to like force you to be like, okay, you know, you have ADD, but like you still gotta be here for this, bro. I'm but you like yeah. found a way to like accommodate to it and be like, oh, this is when I work best, and then made it happen. That's pretty. Yeah, you medicated too. Yeah. That, no, I, I wasn't at the time. I wasn't diagnosed. So I didn't okay. know medication. But uh, oh. so I, I I didn't have medication. I didn't take Adderall or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Later in life, I took it. You know. Um and yeah, I mean that's a whole different conversation. But how old were you when you when you found out you had it? Yeah. Oh, like way like in my mid twenties. Okay, you know, okay. Yeah, I was undiagnosed as a kid. Okay. Course, okay. You know? Okay. Um, but but it's great what you're saying actually because it, it's a, it's a great reminder for me because now that I have kids, like you know you have an impulse as a parent, like you want your kids to like fit into society and do well, and like I have to just remind myself that like you know every kid has his own 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 thing and you, you have to you have to put them in situations where they're going to excel and not not in situations yeah, where they're going to fail that, yeah and I, I just don't think that they think about that a lot when it comes to stuff like that it's just you immediately know, like, medicated right before you try something yeah, it's else like immediately or? like you get medicated like because right. one of my younger brothers you know that was you know had that similar situation but um but he was medicated you know right. but it's, yeah. so it's interesting that i'm like whoa i did not know that people would actually you know it's also like you found that on your own 
I just, you know, I remember, yeah, I just, I just knew that I fucking didn't like waking up in the morning and my, <laughs> my, 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 I just couldn't think in the morning. You yeah. Know, like, like, I'm just like, I remember just being in school, just like my eyes glazing over until like noon, you know, and Damn. like no matter what, even if I got a lot of sleep or I didn't get a lot of yeah. sleep, like my brain just does not work. God, someone morning. needs to use your story. <laughs> yeah. So, so that was just my personal thing. And, yeah. and, you know, and as I got older, I had a hard time going to sleep. So I'm just like, dude, I'm going to play music. I'm going to be out late. Like, or even if I'm not like, just there's no reason to like if i can have the classes i want in the afternoon why not take those i think i had one class at 11 you know that was like it yeah for, for, for the, for how did the drive through deal come along were you guys playing shows already as midtown for a while so drive through they were actually from jersey richard and stephanie were from yeah. jersey so they knew about the jersey scene they would go to shows there and they were interested in humble beginnings so okay. i knew them from humble beginnings and i was kind of when when i left humble i told them like hey guys i'm, I'm really sorry like I got kicked out of humble beginnings. Like, obviously if you guys don't want to sign them, you can sign them. And they were like, they said something really nice. Like, well, we really want to sign humble beginnings because we believe in you. Like, if you're not going to be in there, like, I don't know how excited we are about that. And yeah. for me, that was such a nice sign of friendship Amazing. that, 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 yeah, I, I was just it's like, wow. Feels. Yeah. It, it really feels good. Yeah. And, and then I was just like, okay, cool. Like, Oh, I'm going to start this new band. I'd love to show it to you when I have it. Like, yeah, please show it to us. And like, you know, I think six months, nine months later, I had a demo and they're like, holy fuck, this is great, you know? And they're like, cool, let's do it. And that was really the beginning of it. Yeah, drive Through was the label back then too, man. It was, it so was. So many it bands were on drive so Because a lot of stuff, you know, they were like a West Coast label in like the Blink-182 lane a little bit, right? Totally. Because mm -hmm. they had this band, Phoenix TX. They had a ska yep, band Phoenix called yep. um, Arx Bandits. Who were yep. Like mm -hmm. yep. Oh, wow. Band, yeah. And then they had Phoenix TX. And Phoenix TX, I think the dude from phoenix cx was dating like mark hoppus assistant they were connected like to blink in some, some way some man. some connection yeah but like blink was hooking them up they were and, and they were like getting radio shows and their song was getting played on the radio and they were signed yeah. to drive through so that kind of put drive through on the map but it wasn't it wasn't like it didn't feel seen at least for us on the east coast it was didn't feel like yeah. it was a scene thing okay but then but then midtown signed there and then i had just become friends with newfound glory and i brought them newfound glory and then with midtown and newfound glory there then it wow. just kind of like it became a whole new thing you know, <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. it was I, I think hoppus was uh he did a cameo in our expanded song or one of those guys is in their video did? Oh, okay. bandits or phoenix tx phoenix tx i'm phoenix sorry phoenix that sounds about right yeah yeah and yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. kind of put them up there, like yeah. that sounds about dude, right. They, they, I drive through had so many. I know, dude. I forgot Newfound Glory was on there too. Oh, dude, that's yeah, crazy, yeah, yeah. man. I mean, new, new, was they, it a subsidiary? They put each other on the map. Yeah. Was the, then it was the subsidiary of MCA or somehow? Or right, of, and that's when it all went bad. You know, but uh, Gary but, yeah. Ashley. Yes, dude. Wow. How do you remember? How do you know that guy? Because I was on MCA. Because the chat MCA. on 2001. Yeah, For Gary the Ash. Go record. Yeah, and you yeah. found Glory was on the blink. Wow, wow man. That's yeah, did you have did you have a good experience with Gary Ashley? I remember. Is he around or that's? I think he's out, bro. He hasn't been in the business in years. Okay. Yeah. 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 I want. I, I'm, I don't want to say on record, but I thought I think he might have passed. I'm like, I, I'll, 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 oh, you think he passed away? Yeah. I want this out if it's not true. But yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, okay. But, yeah. I thought you meant to see around the business. No, no, no. no. Okay, so. So that do you move to California or no? You stay. I never moved to California. Okay, no, okay. I, I stayed. I stayed. I moved to California five years ago. Um, okay. Oh, really? I stayed East Coast the whole time. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Yeah, it was New York. So then, wh wh what do you do record after Midtown? You do it in Jersey, the first album. Well, we came to California to record. So oh, okay, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we recorded in California. So our first yeah. record was the summer of. 99? 99. That sounds yeah, about right. Yeah, my notes, bro. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> because, yeah, so I was, I was, I started Rutgers in the fall of 98. That, I, you know, we started Midtown, um, got signed and drive through. We're like, yo, come out to California. And I think we went out and I think we went out to visit and we did a rehearsal. Like, and our dream was to work with Mark Trombino. Okay. We love that Jimmy World record. And like mm -hmm. Jimmy World hadn't broken yet, but Clarity yeah. had come out and it was like this major label failure. Like no one knew who it was, but I had a friend who was like, and it's weird because Jimmy World were like. Was it their, not the second record? You talking about their first record? Um, it was the second record. I think Clarity the was the second been, uh, record. What? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, there was yeah. a record before Clarity, I think too. It was called. Um, They're uh, from maybe, Arizona, before, right? Before, yeah, maybe I'm talking my ass. Yeah, that's, my, that's, that's where's my phone at? Here, pull it, pull it up on Spotify because yeah. I don't want to fucking yo, say the wrong. Yo, that's shit that's the biggest. That's the biggest it's band. Before Bleed, uh, Bleed America. That's the biggest band from Arizona, Bleed right? American. Bleed America. Yeah. So the the first record was Jimmy like World, the first record I had think had. Um, Gosh, I know it, it. Um, hold on. Um, you looking it up too? 
Yeah, no, it was, you're right. Clarity, it went Clarity, Bleed America. But What's the first static, record static called? Prevails. Static Prevails, right? Static Prevails. Right. That static, record. You should Sta know that you're from Arizona, homie. Hey, okay, chill. <laughs> so Static Prevails, right. Static Prevails came out, and I don't think anyone really like... I think some people liked it. Yeah. It didn't, didn't really do anything. And it was, again, it was a, it was a straight major label thing. They never mm -hmm. did like Well, they had a song on uh, that Drew Barrymore movie, Never Been Kissed. Yeah. They did? But, yeah. I think, I think that's right. You but think I wouldn't know that? It was Deep very dive. major major label. But then like, I think Rama from Big Wheel like started putting out some singles by them. And I think that got them a little bit like in the scene. Yeah. Because they they made amazing music. I don't know why, what the history was, why they were like a straight to major band. But, but they did some indie releases afterwards. And Clarity came out. I think on whatever label they were signed to from their first record and they just didn't promote it, whatever, but it just like started bubbling in the scene because the production on it was crazy. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it was shit like we had never heard of before. And, and so we, uh, um, like Midtown, a bunch of other people just like fell in love with that record. Yeah. And we're like, Mark Trombino, Mark Trombino, Mark Trombino. And Mark Trombino had ironically done a Blink record, you know? So people don't know that, but, but like, which he, album? Like the uh, first Dude Ranch? Uh, I think he did Dude Ranch. Oh, Damn. I was going to. <clears throat> The, the, I think that was like the breakthrough one. Really? You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was Cheshire. Guess, what? No, 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 Cheshire was Cheshire was their indie record. Yeah, the indie. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I forget what label they're on. Looking up right now. Okay, keep going. It might be. It might. Yeah. I think he did Dude Ranch. Yeah, I think, so, I think he's right. Yeah. So, and that was like their breakthrough record before they were like huge, huge. But mm -hmm. yep, Dude Ranch. <clears throat> Damn. <laughs> so great record. So it, you know, but but March and Bino was in Drive Like Jehu. You know, so he yeah. had like a lot of cred. You know, and like was an incredible drummer and stuff, and he was like a punk rock guy. So drive through, we're able to get in touch with him, and he came to our rehearsal, and he like agreed to do the record. Um, and I think it was pitched to him as like a quick one week record. I think we ended up taking it like almost two weeks, and he was like pissed off that it took so long because <laughs> <laughs> we were like we were like oh we finally get to make a record. We want to take our time and do shit right and like yeah, do, try cool stuff with yeah. Marchand, you know. And he thought he was making just a quick punk rock record, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think that first record landed somewhere in between that, you know. Um, and uh, sacrifice of life. No, that was the EP that we put out ourselves oh, before no, it came out. Yeah, so that's the EP that Save got the world us. Lose a girl, Save the world, lose a girl. Yeah, the sacrifice of life EP was um, was we did ourselves on a local Jersey label called Pinball Records, which doesn't exist anymore. And oh, I think wow. I think it got re-released by by Alex Eyeball. Eyeball re released okay, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So how was it making the record with it? Was it everything you w dreamed? Yeah, it was awesome. You know, the the I think one of the most important things about working with the producer is just the vibe, and yeah. he just had like a really. I remember my girlfriend at the time came and she was like. She was like, he has such a great demeanor. And I didn't know what demeanor meant. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so I had a 4.0. <laughs> I had a 4.0 demeanor. Point demeanor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> Dude, I remember sometime, one, like, time, yeah. one time told me they really liked my energy. I'm just like, what the fuck are you talking about? My energy? <laughs> like, maybe, maybe you know what the word means, but you just never hear it used in that context. You know, now everyone you know, talks about like, oh, I like your energy. Like, but, yeah, like, back then, you're right. It's like, no one talks about your energy. Like, it's like someone's like, yeah, yeah I really it like your is, energy. It is a very new That thing. would be yeah, weird yeah, back then yeah, to say yeah, that. Yeah, right? no, yeah, no one really says it's that. It's so normal to do that. Yeah. Um, so that record comes out and, and is, that a, is that a big response for you guys? Yeah, I think, I think it, it, it was, it felt like very much like a scene thing. Like, you know, it felt like we were elevating from like being like a local Jersey band to like, being on a label from from California, drive through work with March and Bino, um, it still felt kind of punk rock. It was we had a really generally great response to that record, um, and then we just did a shit ton of touring. The record came out that fall, and I finished that semester of school, and then I just left and we just toured. Wow! And then we were touring, touring, touring. And that summer, I remember it was just like a a, a pivotal moment for us. Like we, some forty one were on tour with Blink, and they had to like drop off a last eight shows or something and we did them oh, and so sick. like you know imagine like we, we just get signed we put our first record we're marching B, you know, and then like six months later we're told blink 182 you know Two. wow <laughs> that's like a fuck it's perfect so yeah. it was crazy and i remember like i just remember there was this moment because all the shows were like in sheds and they were outdoors and it was summertime so like we're playing at seven o'clock the sun is still out and even if there's like <clears throat> 3,000 people there they're spread out across all these seats you know so yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't feel like anything you're just like okay it's true but then we had one show it was in Tampa where we played at a hockey arena and everyone just came into the front so it was like a couple thousand people the biggest show to, to date at, at that point and we had um, it was dark and the, the blink lighting guy just used their lights for us and I just remember being like holy fuck dude this is so sick <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <awesome>. <laughs> you felt that feeling I felt that feeling yeah, yeah that was it I was gone <laughs> was um what, what was your major in college anyway when you left what were you 
Um, I made up my own major called philosophy of law. So I took elements of political science and elements of philosophy. Like I liked philosophy, but at the time I wasn't into like metaphysics or like weird shit. Like now I'm really into weird shit. But when I was a kid, I wasn't, I was, I was into like, you know, morals, why, why, why things are right and wrong, how people come together. And then I was into, into political science, but not like international relations. I remember I took a class on Russia and I'm just like, yeah, this is like, like, I didn't like politics of like you know but i like the i like the foundations of politics of like how do people come together and form societies like yeah what is the constitution like you know what is that i dropped out so philosophy in the sense of like um like do you fuck with like stoicism like stuff like of that nature or not that was in my intro to philosophy class i i really like i did like um like i remember took class on morality ethics i took a, a class on on um on a, a contract that's promised was the name of the class and it was basically like like you know when when people make an agreement like like what is the philosophy between like whether or not they should keep that agreement like I oh mean, yeah, just yeah 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 kind of kind of stuff like that pretty yeah. deep i mean yeah i guess it's it, it is kind of it was, it, was, it, it was that's why like my major was pretty philosophy deep, but like kind of like basic pr- principles of just life in general my major is philosophy of law like what yeah. are what are the what are the 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 arguments for like why law exists and how things should come to got be. it okay yeah, okay. Yeah, awesome. yeah yeah, yeah. And it was it was and i had a, 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 a my my professor i took a class by him and i remember like someone there was like a 400 person class and someone was like uh you know it was like i think it was like morality 101 right mm-hmm. and and I think we're studying like the right to life and he's talking about how like it's a negative right and it's like it just means the right not to be killed and where does this come from blah blah, blah. and he's getting into that and someone raised their hand he's like well you know isn't it wrong to to kill someone because it's it says so in the bible you know and and he just went off a little bit and wow. he's like he's like you know people pull punches uh, sometimes and I'm just you know I'm not going to pull punches like you know whether or not god exists is irrelevant like <laughs> you know like if 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 god exists and and he says that killing someone is wrong we are here to study why god says that like it's not that just because god says so that's what that's what makes morality morality is what transcends that and 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 he just like gave like he went off a little bit like you tell he was pissed off i remember just, <laughs> I, 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 I just stood up and started clapping you know and i was wow. like because oh, i was like i was also like at the time i was like you know now i'm a little more tolerant but i was very anti-religion at the time you know punk yeah rock. So, so, <laughs> so i so i was really stoked and that and then that just became my dude and i just uh I, he, cool. he became my advisor my major and i, I saw him actually a couple couple weeks ago Oh really? Stay in touch with him. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Good so, so you, when, when you drop out, shout out Doug Husek. Yeah, is your is your dad super bummed? Does your dad come see you play and stuff like that? Bro, is- dude, my dad just gave me the talk. He's like, listen, he's like, you know, you're always like, can always crash it on my couch, and you can always go to my fridge and take what you want, but you're done, bro. <laughs> you know, it's like wow. cut off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and I remember like I, what I was saying before, I was, I borrowed twenty five hundred bucks from him. I think it's twenty seven hundred bucks to be exact to buy to buy an old Ford Econoline van right to go on tour and we went on one of our first tours and i remember coming home and the van just made this fucking horrible sputtering noise you know <laughs> so he heard me coming from like a block away you know so and this is before cell phones i didn't call him to tell him like he just heard me pulling up because yeah. the van. and i see him come out the house and he's excited to see his son and I, and I open the door to the van and he sees me and his jaw drops and because i was just emaciated we just weren't eating <laughs> 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 and it was this was also like dude in in the late 90s early 2000s like you couldn't like if you were vegan you couldn't find shit to eat anywhere nah, dude. you know yeah it was hard it's to be brutal on tour man then. yeah now it's a little now it's easier but like so easy back in my day <laughs> but yeah the back in van- my day there was no crossroads <laughs> <laughs> so the van's falling apart you're emaciated you come back mm-hmm. quit college but he but He's do you like, my son qu- quit college for this yeah do you remember the first time him seeing you play he saw me play a decent amount. Like, I think, like, you know, on one hand, I think my dad was always, you know, proud of me for, like, doing something. On the other hand, he was disappointed that I stopped, you know, he thought I could, I could, I could have, like, a professional career, you know? Yeah. I was, I was going to be a lawyer, right? If I, if I didn't get signed, I was studying philosophy of law. The, the, 
you go to, to law school after that. Um, so yeah. I was like so far away from that. So he really wanted me to finish, like be able to do school. And, and you know, he for the first few years, he kept pushing me to do it on the side and try to make it happen. And he's like, you can do it. I'm like, dude, I have to. And I told my dad, I'm like, I have to give this my all. Like, I, I don't want to half-ass either thing. Oh, you like know? while yeah, you yeah, were yeah. touring and doing mm-hmm. all the advanced yeah. stuff, he was like, you know. Okay. I know people have done that too, by the way. And I think they half-ass both of them. So. I oh think, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I think you just got if you're gonna do something, you got to do it all the way. All in. Yeah. Man. So, but now I, I think at the end of the day, like you know, like w- parents just want to know that their kids are gonna be okay. And like, once I bought a house, he was happy. When I bought my house in Jersey City, he was happy. I was like, nice. Yes. Here we go. What year? What, what year <laughs> was that? Two thousand three. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that was right after the. What was the year after the uh, MCA release came out? Mm-hmm. I took that exactly. I took my advance. Everyone, Living well is the best revenge. Living well is the best revenge. We got we got an advance. I think everyone got got like a lot back then, man. No, for, for what we were, like, how old we were. I, guess. I got we got forty k each, so it was probably four times four is one sixty. So we got like one sixty. Maybe it was like two hundred, and after whatever yeah. commissions and whatever, we, we I ended up with like forty k in my pocket. That's what I know. Wow. Yeah, and a lot of my friends were getting signed at the time. They all bought cars. I bought a house. You bought a house. Yeah. That's so smart, man. Car. Yeah. Wow. Im- immigrant mentality, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how long did you live in that house for? Dude, I had that house until I moved to California. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that house, That's bro. That's amazing, I bought bro. 2003 before the financial crisis, before Jersey City was mm-hmm. gentrified. I got, dude. I was in Jersey City in, in uh, 90 in uh, Grove Street. I was right there, right yeah, by Grove Street. Court, right there, I was, yeah. I was on, I was on, um, I was on Fourth Street. Oh shit, the Fourth Street. I live on Fourth Street now again. Now that's funny. So I was on Fourth Street, um, between uh, Jersey and Coles. Okay. Yeah, right there, bro. Yeah, Jersey City was gnarly, like in ninety, ninety one. Oh, what? Right yeah, we between Coles there. and Mammoth, one block over, one okay. block west. Yeah, you were on Coles. Coles on what? I was on Saddlewood Court, off of the Grove Street station. Okay, right south. Okay, you were yeah, south. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. nice. Yeah. So damn, you brought it back then. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got jumped like my first week there. Like someone stole hundred bucks from me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it took a minute. <laughs> <laughs> It's so like different now. Minute. It's so different it's now. Different, bro. It's oh, it's, different. Oh, so it's Everything's like different. all gingerbread. Wow, it's all gentrified. Oh, okay. Was the uh, was the MCA record a big record? No, I mean, did you guys did you guys catch shit for being on the major back then? Because we all caught it, but yeah, we caught shit for the the major, but also that record. So you know, Mark, the first record to the Mark was like a very like it was kind of punk rock. It was fast. There's yeah. mistakes in it. The second record, we had a major level budget, so we had like two months to do it. And it was very slick. I don't know, like mine was too. Yeah, slick. And I think back then having a slick record meant it was well produced, but people didn't like it. So, <laughs> so true. Really. So, and what yeah. label you on too? They judge you for label you on before they even heard the album. Slick was a really? derogatory term for how your record sounds. It wasn't like a. It wasn't yeah. like hey, it sounds slick. It's like it's too slick. Poppy slick is slick. like a like a diss. It's a diss. It was yeah, a diss. I mean, people don't say that anymore. But like back in the day, like like if your record sounded. Sounded slick. It was like, like yeah, overproduced. Like, like overproduced. Just like good production. Yeah, or? we caught that, man. We caught them the go record because yeah. those songs still stand up in our live set now. They sound great with the other older songs, but the record was overproduced. It was slick. Yeah. By yeah, the yeah, it was, I never liked it, man. Yeah. I always talk about it on this did podcast. You, did you like? Did you like your record? <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> See, it's so. I bet it's fans slick. love it, though. I bet. Well, it's funny because. The first record, everybody loves the se- first record. Second record, people got something to say. So then that record was too slick. You know, it was like too too overproduced. We had a song that was that the, they tried to make it like a radio song. It didn't work, but it's a great song, whatever. And it was also like MCA was like dying at the time too. It was like, uh, you know, MCA, this was like 2002, the beginning of the end of the record business, right? It's like- I Music remember- Cemetery of America, they called it. Exactly, exactly. Really, <clears throat> yes, sir. Yeah, and then it was dead, and then it got folded into Interscope. It was IGA, Interscope, Geffen, A and M. They merged all these Universal labels into one, and MCA got no seat at the table. So MCA was done. <clears throat> and, it's true, and it disappeared. So, so you know, the thing is, when you are um, a new artist in a label in a situation like that, when there's a consolidation or a merger happening, nobody on the team is trying to figure out how to break a new band. They're trying to sell as many Beyonce records as they can. You know? Max, or, or Mary J. Blige was on MC at yeah, the time. Exactly. So, exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's crazy you get caught up in that. Yeah, so like, okay, with with the records being overproduced, obviously it's your guys, but it's your guys' record, yeah, your guys' it's, band. It's, yeah, it's our fault. It's not... No, no. I mean, I don't know, dude. I'm a fucking 19-year-old kid. I don't know my mm. ass from my head. You know, yeah. it's like... That's a good point. I, you know, it's like... And I don't know how to make records at the time. Now I know how to make records. That was my first, second time in a studio. Yeah. You know, and the first time it was like, it worked out. So I didn't think twice about it. Yeah. Um, That's fair. Yeah. You yeah. know, so... so, And it's like... Yeah. 
it's hard. It's like you, you're when you're in something, it's really hard to have, um, like, like a, a, a macro view of it, right? Outside to, to, perspective, yeah, whatever. Outside perspective, yeah, 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 hundred percent. So it was, you know. And by the way, it's not that it was bad. It's we got shit for it. You know, it's like Me it too. did well. It was a it was a decently big record. Uh-huh. But then by then, like, the whole thing happened with MCA wasn't wasn't fun. Our relationship with Drive Through started to fall apart. And we're like, um, fuck this. This isn't what we want to do. And like, we were getting really pushed by MCA to be like a boy band, you know? Wow. I remember like, we were pitched, oh, great. You know, Drive Through just did a deal with MCA. Now you're going to have this huge major label team. We're like, what does that mean? It's like, oh, you're going to have like creative people in the in the building that you can have access. You can have a creative director. Like we're going to go meet him. Great. So we go take a meeting. I remember this is like my first like <laughs> meeting at a, at, at a major, like sitting in. So we go and we, we have a meeting with this creative director. Um, and we're, he's like, we're going to talk about the artwork and like, you know, the vision and what we're going to do and like what, what it's going to be. And we're like, yeah, cool. Yeah. We, you know, like love to hear what you think. And he's like, he's like, I know what it is, this. And in his, in his, in, in his office on the wall, he had printed out and just taped to the wall this photo of two young boys naked lying in a field. <laughs> <You know? laughs> what? What? Yeah, it's bro. I mean, they were they were it was, it was from waist up, so yeah. I don't know how naked they were, but they were like shirtless, shirtless dude, young, wow. young, young wafy boys lying in a field. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "This is what it should be." I'm just like, "Wow, what? dude!" I'm like, "I don't even know how to really? respond to that," you know? Like, so and they really thought like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Dude. So, so, so that, you know, and it's like, it's not about that. That just epitomizes, I think, you know, listen, the thing about like, I'm, I'm a pretty contrarian kind of guy overall. Um, so, it, you know, I think being contrarian has always kind of been like something I've done. So like, so I remember on the first Midtown record when Midtown started, like we came up in an era where it was like, everyone was like very punk rock, right? I don't know if you remember. It's the, true. There was a time when like you would have this summer squatter phenomenon on St. Mark's Place where like all these rich <laughs> kids would come out and like it's fucking true. spend hours yeah. on their hair and like, you know, like, like you just, just trying to, tr- trying to look chain. punk rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, it, and, and to us, like that was the context of the world that Midtown was starting. And I remember like we had played be- before Humble Beginnings, like played shows with the craze. Like there was like this real like 77 punk rock resurgence. Rancid was like huge. And like Rancid is like very respected now. But like there was a time, I think they were on the cover of like Details Magazine or GQ. I or have something. one of those still. You know, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Like it was like, it felt like. The year punk broke, whatever they called it. Yeah. Whatever. It felt like to me, it was like jumping the shark a little bit of that, of that style, that aesthetic. So, so for, for us being punk rock was like to go the total opposite way. And we wore like, uh, like scarves and turtlenecks and like <laughs> on the back of the first midtown record i'm like wearing a scarf and like we're all in turtlenecks and like that was partly like our contrarian approach to it it was also partly like that was uh, the aesthetic of like emo a little bit you know yeah. which was at the time i was like you know backpacks and sweaters and stuff like it was a different different emo than like the mall emo that, that said today it was like more like <laughs> elliot you know emo you know so <laughs> elliot, I remember elliot. yeah so <laughs> so um so and i remember we like people gave a shit for that and it was like funny like we're like yeah we're trolling like we're, we're kind of being trolls that's kind of like uh, you know i've always kind of been a little bit of a troll so um so <laughs> it's just so um so you know in the context of what we were like of what that statement was it made sense but as that scene got bigger and then like major labels started looking at they're like oh this looks like an Abercrombie ad, you know? So it was very easy to be like, oh, four cute young boys and they look like they could be wearing Abercrombie clothes. We could make this like a big pop thing, right? Yeah. And that was the kind of like pressure we were under as a band on a major label. And we really did not deal well with that. You know, we didn't know how to play the game. We had no desire to play the game. And um, we were like troublemakers. So we talked a lot of shit. We got yeah. in trouble. The whole relationship fell apart. We got out of that deal. And then we made a record, the third record. We were made it with no label. Um, we made it with Butch Walker. We went Butch down, Walker? Yeah, Butch Walker. Yeah. That's on Columbia, right? On Columbia. Well, w- well, we finished that record first, and then we sold it to Columbia. We did kind of like oh, wow. kind of like what Jimmy World did with Mark Chambino, okay. which is like, you know, and we just did it with Butch, and, and we sold it to Columbia, and that was 
fucking oh i think it was from the money from columbia that i bought my house i don't think i got any money for the mca record yeah, yeah columbia think, right yeah, yeah yeah i think it was that signing that allowed me to buy my, my jersey City dude B- butch walker is sick man yeah. great producer man yeah, he's amazing so so that, so, was, so that was forget what you know yeah and and i remember when we were making that record we said we said hey like we just want to make a record that in 20 years we're going to be proud of even if nobody likes um, and that's kind of what happened. Nobody got the record. The record came out. Our first record was too, was too, was too, our first record was great. Second record was too slick. Third record was too weird. And then Midtown was over. That's pretty much it. And that was it cool, after that. Cool interview, guys. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so, th- so, so you guys broke up in 2005. Uh, no, I think it was over by like uh, 2004. 2004. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that yeah. record wasn't received all the Columbia one? No. Nah. And, and again, uh, Columbia, we sent to Columbia two months after we signed. Columbia's getting merged with wow. Epic. There was that whole buyout, like some hedge fund guy. I think his name was Guy Hands. He bought like all these companies uh-huh. and like merged them. And again, same thing. My manager, he's funny. He's, he goes, you know, a lot of artists when they don't do well, they like to say they got fucked, but you really got fucked, Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what what happens to your life after that when you're done with the band? Because there's like a two year gap between that and Corporate Starship. Yeah, so it's 24, 2004. I'm 24 years old. Very young, bro. Fuck. Uh, yeah. Relatively young. And, you know, but I, but by then I had been doing it for like, you know, I, like I said, I got my base in my bar mitzvah, you know? Yeah. But I'd been touring since I was 16, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, and um, it was kind of over. We did, mid, you know, Midtown was like, we didn't know who to tour with. That record didn't really fit in anywhere, right? And it was like a weird record. It was like, the scene had changed a lot. Like the scene we came from, some bands got huge. Some bands, you know, became metal. Like it was yeah. just was like, it was like a weird time for, 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 for that scene. And, and also it was really hard for us. I think w- what happens when you're young, you kind of do stuff and you try stuff. And I think because that whole scene was new, it happened to a lot of bands. Like, you know, you feel like you work hard to build this infrastructure of this this scene and we yeah. book the shows and like you feel like you're building it brick by brick right and then what happens is that people that come after that they're just like cruising down the highway that you built brick by brick right it's true and that can be very disheartening to to people and it was definitely disheartening to there was a moment that started to me but i remember like i there were other people who felt that way too and the only consequence you get from feeling that way is that you end up being the dude at the bar just complaining about the new bands you end up like like wow. the dude like the dude being sung about in new direction the, the gorilla biscuit song you know yeah, 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 like yeah. like the dude's just hating on the new kids yeah. just mm-hmm. just because right maybe yeah. you have a reason to hate on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah maybe yeah. you have a reason to hate on it maybe yeah. like, maybe maybe you did work hard you're not recognized but you know that's the co- that's the hand you're dealt another question is what are you going to do with it right yeah. so so i had to like really make a decision i was like at a at a, at a kind of like a, a a watershed moment in my life either like i'm 24 years old mm-hmm. you know i own a house i can go back to school i'm not too old to go back to school um and i can do it and I, I, uh, or and i was gonna do it i was really considering it but i had this one friend her name was Kelly McCauley, and she worked at Diesel. Do you remember there was a time like in the early 2000s where everybody wore Diesel? Diesel yes. Diesel? Yes. It was because of Kelly. Kelly just like laced up all these bands. Ah. Like, you know? So she just gave everyone free free gear, you know? Wow. And she like, she loved, she came from the scene. She was, she was a punk rock chick. And, but she like, she did everybody. She only, didn't only do like scene warp Tour bands. She also did like the Strokes and the Rapture and like the Hips to New York. She yeah, like, yeah, yeah. did everything. She, she goes. She was a plug. She was a plug. But she told me, she's like, She's like, you know, Gabe, I, I go to a lot of shows, obviously, you know, and I'll just tell you, like, I, I see even bigger bands than you and I don't see the, the, the presidents of the companies coming out for their shows, like, but they come out for, for your show. So if they're coming out, that means they believe in you and they think you have potential. Like, if you just get out of your own way, you could probably be really successful. Wow. And I'm like, huh. And those were like, it's funny how, like, you know, you have conversations with people, people don't think twice, but sometimes like someone says something to you and just like completely impacts and changes your life. hundred percent. And I just thought about that and that was just like resonating and I'm like, huh, maybe I should just get out of my own way and stop like fighting all the time, you know, like, cause I'm like very contrary and I was, I was an angry kid growing up and I had, I had a lot of reasons to be, to be angry, you know, like legitimately. And again, it's like, it's like, do I want to be angry or do I want to win? So I'm just like, okay, why don't I just try to win, you know, instead of just like complaining. Um, yeah. And, um, and I did, I got on my own way. I said, okay, well, I've, I've been doing this for almost 10 years. I've been touring for almost 10 years. Like I've learned something when I first started, I didn't know how to fucking sing. I didn't know how to play. I didn't understand the fucking concept of rhythm, dude. I remember I had a conversation <laughs> with, 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 uh, with, with, with one of the dudes from big wig. Big wig. Yeah. And I was talking about recording and we're like, we're all like, you know, recording for the first time. 
And like when I played bass, I just try to play as fast as possible and just make it do as many notes yeah. as I could. He's like, he's like, yeah, it's better when everyone's playing the same rhythm. I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> like I remember not understanding what that means. Yeah. I'm like, oh, so the way the guitar player moves his hand, I got to move my hand the same way too. Yeah. Oh, I got to lock in with the drummer's doing like, like, dude, I was so like, like I didn't have natural ability, you know. But I learned it, and and you know, after ten years of doing it, I, I like I figured it out, and I made records. And I could be on stage. I'm like, okay, why don't I just try to use these skills that I've learned for over the past 10 years and see if I can be successful doing it. Yeah. Um, and that was the impetus for starting Corporate Starship. So, wow. So were you, were you working in between that or were you just chilling for those two years? Like when you stopped touring, stopped doing it? It was time? one year. It was one year. It was 2004. Oh, year, okay. uh, well, I guess, let me think about it. 2004, Midtown ends. I go... It was like a year and a half, basically. Okay, so, that's not, so yeah. no, I was writing all the Cobra stuff. Sick. So I wow. like so so I had like like a couple of like parameters for Cobra. One is that I just want it to be fun. Yeah. Um, I want I wanted it to be like somehow more of a pop thing, and I wanted to like the way I approach making music to be different. I had just gotten into I I got this program called Reason, and yeah, so I got, yeah. I I just got into production. So I just said I just want to start with the drums because before I was writing songs just on guitar, and when you're writing songs just starting guitar, you're a little limited with what you can do. So I'm like I just want to start with drums and see how what I can build from there. Yeah. And so I spent a year. I remember like I rented a house in uh, in the Catskills for the summer and I just took a computer there and just tried to write songs and that's where I wrote that the Sinks on a Plane song that year and took, it took a year for it to come out afterwards so then I'm sitting on these songs I have this this record and um, and and I remember my manager at the time was like dude we just need some like some kind of launch pad for this we can't just put it I'm like, and I'm like dying to put it I'm like I want to put it out I want to put it out and then um the snakes on a plane opportunity just landed on his lap and I already had the name Cobra Starship Crazy, so man. it was like cool let's just do it and then that, that kind of like got it started Where's the name come from, Cobra Starship? Uh, it came from a vision that I had where uh, I saw uh, uh, Cobra from the future. Sick. Came on a it's a yeah. dope name. It's a great yeah. name. It's a yeah. dope name. <laughs> and while the city sleeps, we rule the streets is the album. That's the first album. It's a hard name. It's like a hardcore. It sounds it's, yeah. it's like a war zone record or something. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like the name of it is fucking. But yeah, so like, so Snakes on the Plane, that's just like next level. That's just. That's crazy, man. Yeah, so I went from like, you know, being in a failed pop punk band to like, you know, walking red carpets with like uh fucking Samuel Jackson. Dude, it's like uh yeah. from first to last and how they broke up and then it's came Skrillex. back as Skrillex. That's you some yeah. sim similarities to me. Yeah. Similar. Yeah, he reinvented yeah. himself. Like you were totally like a different dimension. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was also inspired by like um Buster Point Dexter, who was what's his name? Uh, he was in, in Singer of New York Dolls. Uh, oh, Joe Joe Hansen. Oh, that's so, right. Yeah. yeah, people don't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So, that, yeah. so that's the so, first single. Snakes on the Plane is the first single. Uh huh. Damn. And the soundtrack title of a soundtrack. Soundtrack, and then I dropped our album two months later because I had the album ready to go. It was done. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just waiting for a, a launch pad for it, you know. And how how did that even? Did you just write a song called Snakes on the Plane? Did, did no. They so write I had the, the name Cobra Starship and the song. On the album before it had a different chorus, so it was just a song that I had, and um, the the chorus for that is a little bit more like it almost sounds a little bit like La Tigre, the chorus, okay, of that, you know. So I was like, it, you know, and um, and <clears throat> my manager's idea, amazing idea, Jonathan Daniel. I don't know if you know, but like maybe he, yeah, he uh, it's Fall Out Boy also like okay, just just okay. just a visionary kind of guy, and he's like, okay, cool. So the way it came together is. Snakes on a Plane, the movie, was on New Line Cinema. And New Line had started a record label with Adam Schlesinger from Fountains of Wayne's and James Eha from Smashing Pumpkins. So they had a record label. And gotcha. they had one wow. signing at the time. It was this band, The Sounds. I know uh, The Sounds. Exactly. So the Sweden, they're amazing, man. <clears throat> they're yeah. Amazing, yeah, yeah. amazing band from Sweden. Band. I was already a fan of them. Uh, so they had The Sounds signed. And so I guess, you know, they called, you know, New Line Cinema called the, their record label partners like, oh, we want help us with a soundtrack. And so Adam and Jonathan were friends and he's like, oh, you know, we're, we're going to do a soundtrack for Snakes on a Plane. Do, do you guys have any new artists working on it? He's like, he's like oh, well, it's funny. I have uh, my artist Gabe. He was in this band called Midtown. He has a new project called Cobra Starship. Maybe there's something we could do. Cobra Starship, Snakes on a Plane. Perfect. And he's like, and we'll get some of our other artists involved too. Some other developing artists. So that he got he got Travi from Gym Class, The Sounds, William Beckett from The Academy is was big, and it was like this this like kind of super group kind of like thing. Yeah. So cool. you know, and it did great. Everyone loved it, and the song was like climbing the charts. I was unsigned. The song was uh, on the radio, climbing the charts. Wow. And then the, you know the movie came out. 
and I don't know if you remember this, but their whole marketing campaign, it was like one of the first like really big internet marketing things that, you know, in, of, of the mid-aughts, right? Yeah. And the, their whole premise was this is the greatest movie that's ever been made in the history of cinema right <laughs> and it was like snakes on a plane it's like we can't even tell you it, all you need to know is there's snakes on a plane but it's, it's, it's they wouldn't really say knows, anything yeah. but that was how they're promoting it and then the movie came out and it was like a piece of shit b movie like, <laughs> yeah. you know? and, and like that was the fun of it right yeah, it's like yeah, a yeah. fun it's like sharknado or I something feel like it was like, big, i felt, like, I felt like it was big in a way that people like there was hype they loved it in a way in a in a funny way well yeah. right the, Half the people did, but yeah. the half of the people that really thought it was going to be a, a great work of cinema were very, very angry. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so the song, it's funny. The, the song was climbing the charts. The movie comes out, and there's like a huge backlash against the movie. The song falls off the charts. Uh, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck. Damn. <laughs> but then you guys end up doing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles part of that song. Nah, I, that was just a sound. That wasn't like a big deal. I think that was okay. just one song. Uh, I, I, I forgot about that. We, yeah, we just had a song on the, the soundtrack for that. But the Snakes on a Plane thing was huge because the video for that, Samuel Jackson was in the video. The video sick. rolled in the oh, credits. So yeah. We were like performing at the premiere. It was like a wow. big fucking thing, you know? And so that put Cobras on the maps right away. And then like everyone knew about it. I'm like, oh, cool. Gate from Midtown's doing this thing. It was like a it was like a one-off thing. And I'm like, no, here's my album. And everyone's like, you're trying to milk this thing. And I'm like, and I'm like, no, this was like a project that I had before. And I just felt like, I just felt like, you know, like my philosophy at that point was like, okay, I could like try to explain this until I'm blue in the face so I can just go out there and prove it. So like when when that came out and the album came out, we got so much hate and so much backlash for so many reasons. Like you're milking it, you're from a fucking pop punk band while you're doing this electronic thing. Wow, like dude. like all this shit. So different back then, man. Bro, so much yeah. so much hate. And and I remember we were voted that year uh, band most likely to disappear next year, you know, and uh, an alternative press. So that was what we were voted on alternative press. Wow. And I just toured that whole year. I didn't say a word about it. I didn't like argue with people about it. I just, just fucking, fucking, I just stuck, went yeah. and just made it. fans and proved it and just did it, played with That's everybody and anybody, recorded a record on the road, had another record out Viva within Cobra. the year. Viva La Cobra. And had a record out within the year. So within, basically in one year, we put out two records. And Damn. and that after that album came out, we were voted most underrated band in AP. And then the next year, next year we headlined Warp Tour. So that wow, was like that bro. was a, that was a trajectory. Yeah. And then yeah. Hot yeah. Mess was the last record. Well, the no, Hot it was Mess, Night Shades too, and there's more. Night Shades, Night Shades wasn't was Night Shades fell off. I, I really think bands only have three good records in them. So Hot Mess was the last good record. I, I, I would say. <laughs> you guys are having a fan base uh, and killing it, right? Just different. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the, you know, Viva La Corbe was like a huge underground record, and yeah. like I remember we headlined Roseland on that record to like three thousand people at Roseland. Wow. You know? so, Roseland's a huge venue yeah. in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And, Hot Mess has the song with Layton. Exactly. Easter so then yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot Mess is when we crossed over into pop culture. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And we were nominated for VMA and yeah. like all this shit. Like that was that, massive. Yeah, yeah, that was fucking massive. Amazing, do, you feel, do you feel like you went back to your original roots of like your love for hip hop and with creating Cobra Starship? For sure. Yeah. A little bit. I mean, I want to say my love for hip hop, but but pop, yeah, yeah, just just like, yeah. I mean, listen, you, yeah, punk rock is like where my heart is at because I feel yeah. like what I learned in punk rock and like the community is like totally. really changed my life. But I like all types of music. Yeah, that's you know? what I'm saying. And my it, point, it, yeah. You, you can feel some of the hip hop influence. Yeah, that's I, was, I mean, listen, we Mac Miller's first feature is on a Cobra song, you know? Oh, so, shit, I didn't know that. Shit. Come on, Deep Dive. I, know, I didn't know that. Deep sick. Dive yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then the last song was N Never Been In Love with yeah. the, um, that, the girl, what's her name, Icona Pop? With Icona Pop, yeah. 2014, yeah. 2014, yeah. But that was, it, it was kind of over by then already. Like the two original, two original, my, my guitar player, my bass player had left by then. I got married, you know, I was kind of yeah. like, I was kind of like, you know, I, I feel like I want, I had something to prove with doing Cobras and I yeah. wanted to do something. Oh, is that when Halvo came in? Mm -hmm. That's oh, when okay. Halvo came in, exactly. Yeah. But it was, it was kind of, it was kind of done by then. And I was like, cool i was like i was like honestly after after hot mess i was happy to be done I, I was done in my head but you know when the machine's going it's like you know how do you get off i remember i watched i watched um this is what happened this is how cobras basically ended so um i watched this documentary uh supermensch the legend of shep gordon okay. have you seen it maybe you not. gotta see it. supermensch okay okay it's about this manager, Shep Gordon. Um, it's made by Mike Myers. Mike Myers met him on the set of Wayne's World because he managed Alice Cooper. So Got Alice you. Cooper's like his first client. He like did all that oh, stuff. Oh, I heard about this guy. 
Yes. Unbelievable dude. He's a legend. Okay. Um, actually, I actually was able to meet him not too long ago. It was like one of, one of my, I, I mean, I don't know if he's an idol of mine, but he definitely shaped my life. Because, yeah. So in in the movie, he talks about like, it, it's about his career and he goes from like being like a rock and roll manager in like the late 60s, 70s, Alice Cooper. Then he does Seal and Blondie oh, and like shit. becomes a major manager in the 80s. And then he discovers or not discovers, he kind of creates the idea of the celebrity chef, right? He, okay. So, so he and and he talks about that. He gets into that in the movie, and he talks about how he fell in love with cooking, right? And he talks about you know how he falls in love with dinner parties. And he's like, you know, when you're doing a dinner party, uh, you go, you buy the food, you prepare, you cook it, you serve it, people eat, they enjoy. It, the dinner party's over, they leave. Mm-hmm. When you have an artist, it's like they write some songs, you put them in the studio put out the record they go on tour they write some more songs they go back in the studio another record another tour it's like when do you get off how do you know when it's over yeah right and so like that was resonating in my head you know and yeah and i already felt like it was over but i was just like okay how do i get off this thing like when you know i'm just gonna do like by then already i already had my spiritual awakenings i'm very much like i'm gonna do whatever the universe puts in front of me like that, <laughs> that's yeah, what i'm gonna yeah, focus yeah. on you know i'm just gonna keep my head down whatever and i'm i'm in this thing i'm in this i'm in this machine called cobra starship and you know I'm just gonna just let let the universe guide me, and so I'm in I'm in Copenhagen doing a writing camp. Ironically, writing some songs that are probably some of the bet, bet, better songs that I'd written because I, I, there was a moment that I went to like a writing slump, hence the fourth record. But but uh, <laughs> but uh, but so I, I was like I felt rejuvenated, like you know I was like writing these great songs, and and I get two calls in one day. Uh, one is that. Um, the guy who was the head of my label um, had a stroke. Wow. Mm. And he was like my day one. You know, at labels, a lot of people shuffle around, people move, people leave. Yeah. Like, you know, so I had been at the label now like eight years and he was like my, like one of the few people that was there from the beginning, you know, and yeah. he came from the video department. He was like very instrumental in like having Cobras f- have a different vibe than like the warp tour scene you know oh, like, yeah, yeah. like so he 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 is he a great great guy really got got me got what cobras was and then all of a sudden he's like out of commission and then the next call i get is that my girl is pregnant you know oh wow so that was like you know the same you, day same day bro wow so just imagine what kind of an emotional roller coaster of a day that is it's heavy man you know it's heavy and awesome <laughs> beautiful heavy awesome confusing yeah but also i think the one thing that was clear to me was that like that was the universe telling me is like, okay, this is where you get off. And yeah. so I just came back to summer 2015. I came back and I'm like, cool. Like I've always wanted to work on the music business. Like I wasn't sure how or when, but I just came back, started talking to people. Um, and I decided to, uh, to, to call started. quits that, that, that fall. Yeah. Wow. That was it. Damn. That was 2015. And then you started your management company, which is also turned into a label as well too. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It was yeah. management just first. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I, I got to LA. I'm, I'm like, okay, I, I want to be in the music business. Like, I've always loved the music business. Like, when I was younger, it's funny, when, when we were in, like, trying to get out of our deal with drive through and MCA, yeah. we were, like, in a holding pattern for a couple, for a- almost two years. Like, we're just like, okay, I'm not recording another, another record for MCA under this contract. It's a terrible contract. Yeah. And, and there's no one here that likes us. We want to get off. You're not going to let us off. We're just going to play a game of chicken, and I'm not going to put out any music Wow. Uh, or you let me off. So we finally got out. But while we were playing that game of chicken, we did two things. One is we we wrote that record that we ended up recording with Butch Walker and we recorded him secretly. No one knew about. <laughs> and wow. And then the other thing we Power did. Move. Yeah. And then the other thing I did is that I started managing this band called Armor for Sleep, who are my homies from yeah. Jersey. I know that name. Yeah. 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 No, so, Armor for Sleep. so I wanted to manage them because I wanted to learn the business from the other side. Like when you're an artist, people just don't tell you shit the same mm-hmm. way, you know, but when you're, yeah. when you're, when you're the manager, you just get to learn the business. So I really learned the business. I, I, I did a record deal for them where I talked to a lawyer. I learned a lot from the lawyer about the record deal. I mean, they did an amazing deal for them. They own their first master, like at a time where people wow. didn't own masters. Um, so they own their first album, Ariel Rekscheid, who's now a huge producer and does like Haim and Madonna. He had, that was his first record he ever did was Armor for Sleep, the first Armor record. Wow. Is that the one with Car Underwater? Um, I think th- Car Underwater is the second album. Second album. I could be wrong. That's cool, yeah, man. Car is the second yeah. album, yeah. I remember um, that band. That band blew up, right? Yeah. Yeah, they had, they, mm-hmm. had a, they had a minute. They had a minute. Wow. Mm-hmm. And they started getting more bands and just growing it, and building it. No, no, no. Then, then I got, then I got out of my deal, and I got, I, I was able to, uh, to, um, 
to then I signed to Columbia and, I'm, and I had to like make another record and I was like okay so and, and I got a new manager at the time I started working with Jonathan Daniel who at the time he was just managing Butch Walker that's how I met him okay, okay. Butch Walker he's managing Butch Walker and I think um, Stacy from American Hi-Fi also who like he was managing basically producers who were also artists yeah um, but but I met him, he started managing Midtown and then the next thing he picked up was Fall Out Boy, <laughs> you know? Wow. And so like we were, it was like, a, it was kind of like, and Fall Out Boy, I remember the last Midtown tour that we did, we were opening for Fall Out Boy when Fall Out Boy was still playing like skate parks and VFW halls, but they were like packed to the brim with kids outside not being able to get in. Like you felt like it was happening, you know? Wow. So, so, and that was a good tour for us too because I felt like that, you know, I was 22 when I did that tour and Fall Out Boy were like 18. They're like four years younger than me, you know? Yeah. But it was like four years is a generation in music. Think about it. Like you're in high 100%. school, like but you're freshman to senior. Like by the time you're out of high school, there's a whole new generation of kids that comes in and may not listen to the same music, whatever. So but, true. But I met these kids and I'm like, oh, you guys are like where I was when I started Midtown four years ago. And you're not thinking about the business. You're not like bogged down by the drama. You're just like loving making music. I'm like, I need to just reconnect to that. You know, yeah. and that was also my energy with making Cobras. I'm just like, I'm just gonna connect to like having fun doing music, you know, because it can get heavy, bro. It music does can get man. heavy. The scene gets heavy. The politics gets heavy. You know, and the I, labels, I'm, the sound scan, all that, all that shit. shit. And I'm also in. the kind of dude that like I run into the fire when there's a drama, there's a problem. Like I run for it, and that was that was always my personality, and that just causes a lot of problems for a person. Now I'm a little more in, in my old age. I'm a little bit more chilled out, you know. But, <laughs> <laughs> but back when I was a kid, I was a shit starter, you know. So, <laughs> so. Uh, um, so, uh, yeah, so I just connected to that and that was kind of, kind of, but, but, oh, the reason I was talking about that is because, so then, so I brought Armor for Sleep into Crush, basically. When, when Crush Management? Crush Management. Yeah, big Jonathan shit. Daniel. So, Huge. So, so that's the, so that's when, so then I stopped managing Armor for Sleep. They were still, they were on the same management company I was, but then I went back to being an artist. I, I told him from the beginning, I'm like, guys, like I'm managing you now because I'm, I was like 22. I'm like, I'm 22. You guys, I fucking love you guys. You guys are my little homies. And I'm also like the biggest fucking fan. Like I'm just gonna help you guys like whenever any way I can. But there's gonna come a point where like I either won't be able to help you, or like I'm gonna go back to being an artist. Like I'm yeah. just in a point right now where I'm like playing this game of chicken. Either I can't get out of this deal and I'm done being an artist, or I'm gonna get out of this deal and put out another record. So like yeah. was, that was that was I was upfront about that from the beginning, and I went and put out another record, and then I was an artist for another like. 12 years after that, you know? Yeah. Um, and, but I always knew I, I would go back to the business side of it. Yeah. yeah. And so you've been doing it for a long time, right? I've been in the business now five years. So I started out, I came here, um, 2016. Yeah. Why Cali? I just feel like all the young people, like, you know, yeah. if, w there used to be a time in New York where like, you know, if you were a young musician, you wanted to go be with other musicians, you moved to New York. I just feel like, that's kind of gone. Like you said, New York is different now. Yeah. Like rents are too expensive. There's no studios left there because the rents are too expensive. There aren't like, you know, yeah. it's like, it's like we're young Wall Street people move. It's not where so you young. sold your crib out there. Yeah. yeah so awesome. That's a City sick place. move. Yeah. yeah. Were you nervous about coming to Cali or no? Cause I've been coming to Cali for a long time. Yeah. I like knew some people and like, you know, I, I also just like jumping into the fire. So I'm, I'm yeah. really, you know, so I was like, I was like, cool. My wife was a little like, what the fuck? Oh, she's but from East coast too. She's from the West coast. She's from Northern Cali. So, you know, but, oh, okay. but, 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 different vibes. but LA is a different vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And also like when we first got here, we were like crashing in my friend's house and like living, it was like, we were like, she's like pregnant and we're like living in a dorm. So, <laughs> <laughs> so she was a little pissed at that, but we got settled. It took a minute, but she's we got a real settled. one, man. Yeah, she's, she's a real one. one. She's yeah. a real one. Yeah. She's a real one. <laughs> How'd you guys meet? Uh, we met through mutual friends, actually. The, the yeah, she's awesome, yeah, man. Yeah. And then becoming a dad, it changes your whole perspective on the world, huh? In yeah, a sense, it's crazy. It's man. incredible, it's crazy. dude. It's crazy, dude. It's like, oh, oh, I mean, if you weren't emo before, it's like overnight emo, man. Twenty four, just everything's emotion. Everything's just like the world. Just every you see it in such a different way. Yeah, I mean, I everyone's like, you have to have a girl because it'll soften you up. I'm definitely like, like I'm like, I'm like a. I don't know, a tiger dad is that a thing like I don't know like my kids <laughs> my kids are like you have two kids I have three wow yeah, what are the ages I just had a third I just had a third a month congratulations, ago congratulations yeah. man thank you bro what are the ages uh, one just turned six two weeks ago the other one's turning three in May and the other one is a month old so what is it uh, what is it with boy girls all boys bro wow boys, yeah. that's fucking <laughs> amazing they're, they're bruisers <laughs> my, like, like I'm, a, I'm a big guy like yeah, but I'm are. like I'm kind of lanky you know yeah. I'm like a six foot four lanky guy my wife's dad played in the NFL, so he's like six foot four and big, you yeah. know? Wow. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. And her cousins are all like, they're Irish, so they're like fucking Viking blood, you know? Like, uh -huh. so my kids are just fucking 
bruisers. You Damn, know? we got three Damn. boys. That's what my mom had. That's amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, wow. so uh, is so, that it for you? No more kids. I'll take as many as I can get, bro. I'm, 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 you, yeah, you love it. Yeah. You love being yeah. the dad. You love it. Yeah, I love being a dad. Yeah, they're yeah. rowdy bunch, huh? They're rowdy. My kids are fucking rowdy. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> like I'm definitely like it's not softening me up. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I got people, you. like people, like everyone's like busy, keeping me busy, keeping my toes, just fucking like. My and also my kid just like they're they they like to break shit you know what I'm saying like <laughs> they're they're not like they're not like play toys and build shit they like to sh- break shit like yeah. shit, which is great that's how you learn I, I remember like I remember one time when I was a kid I took a hammer to my bunk bed and like just started hammering my and like I wasn't trying to I just, you just was doing it. exploring what it was doing to the yeah, wood you yeah. know wow. like but you, you don't realize that you're breaking shit you, you know smashed so I got, it down. I, I just fucking destroyed the whole the whole. The, <laughs> I, I didn't break so it down. Funny. I just made it super ugly. You know, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. I just put all these hammer marks all over my bunk bed because I was just like, oh, it's it's you know, I was like interested in like the what it's doing to the wood by yeah. putting yeah, hammer. Yeah, you know, yeah. like but you know, <laughs> whatever. Do, do you have any major regrets in your life? No, I got no regrets. Love that man. No regrets. No. Just a quick response. I love that. Yeah, Some yeah. people just so like, nah, nah. I, I lived through everything and just yeah, that's awesome, man. Zero. Do you have any daily rituals? Yes. You got a you, lot you, of daily rituals. You bro. do yoga? Don't do yoga, but I fucking feel like I should because my back. I just can't do classes, bro. I can't be in a class with people doing exercise. I just, I, I just can't. <laughs> But you broke it down like that. I know, but it's that so simple. true, though, I man. I felt it. I felt it. I was like, and then right, like gyms, none of that. And then shit. like my other options to watch on TV. I also just nah, feel like yeah. I can't do that. Like I go to the gym, and like I just w- when I go to the gym, I do a lot of weights, and like I also feel like in between my actual lifting i'm stretching out all the time as much as i can yeah you know, i don't go to the gym as much as i should and as much as i now that i have three kids it's so hard to find time i can't it's imagine so hard, bro. bro but like before i had kids i was in the best shape of my life bro i'll show you a picture bro was fucking you look pretty good though man i'm okay bro i could i could i could i could, I could strengthen <laughs> up a bit you know but my back i definitely am getting like old man back problems at 42 now dude. You know? <laughs> just that's happening the body's just falling apart the kids, what, the kids just jumping on you <laughs> yeah, um, yeah you consider yourself yeah. an optimist or pessimist optimist yeah, optimist. i could totally see that yeah. very optimistic yeah i'm a very i'm very realistic and i'm i uh i um i think humans have infinite potential for good and evil so I'm, I'm also like i'm not one of these people who's an optimist and just like oh everyone's good and that's like no nah. they're fu- fucking some dark evil people out there yeah. but but ultimately i just think that the good guys win i love that yeah even if they have to smash them faces in you can, <laughs> you can still be a good guy have to smash them faces. Oh, yeah, to- yeah. To- yeah. totally true yeah. is there anything like this pandemic like being locked down like did your life change drastically or you just always you, you said you kept working but it didn't because you weren't touring a lot like a lot of bands stopped touring but is there anything you learned about yourself from being being home for that long, or you always been home for a while? Actually, I've thought about that. Well, you know, I have a small office, and it's yeah. walking distance to my house. Like when I moved when I moved from L, from New York, I wanted to still like have a New York experience in LA. So yeah. you know, I, I live close to my office, and I can't work from home with my crazy kids. You know, so yeah. So <laughs> I, ha- I had I just kept going to the office, yeah. and yeah. you know, just being able to just like make calls and do emails. I think. It was good, it, you know, for for artists. I think a lot of artists had to find ways to reach people without touring and find new audience without touring, because touring is like the number one way you get to like meet fans and and and, and survive for a lot of bands, survive and expose yourself to new audiences. So you know, we've been really lucky that we've been successful with some of our artists of like finding success on TikTok and yeah, you know, having viral songs go and like doing things digitally, live so streams, all that. Yeah. That's a lot of stuff that that we've been focusing on. Um, and uh, and so that's I, I think that's kind of like been a good thing. I think if anything's changed, it's just really like more focus on that. You yeah. Know? Do you listen to new music and listen to new bands and stuff? You know, I have so many artists that I work with. I'm w- working on their music, listen to it. I mean, I mean the one record that is just like I, I can't remember the last time I was to a record from beginning to end and loved it is the Turnstile record. Yeah, I knew he was gonna, yeah, say, knew he was gonna say it. I was gonna write it down, bro. Forty year old dads Woo! are just like I'm just like I, I I'm just I am just the target demo. <laughs> you know? That's yeah. all we talk about the pox. Even Milo went and saw them like he talked about the podcast yeah. and he pulled up we with went, his kids. We went and saw them at the Novo. Dude, bro, 20 let me show you. Let, let me, here, pass me Yo, 2,500 kids at the Novo two nights. And I we was went. there. I was there. Oh, shit. Oh, we, we, we went I was, too. I was I was there this on Sunday, the Sunday. That's the way that's that's we were there we too. Went. Oh, yeah. I miss you guys. Yo. Yeah. Yo, we, but, but, I love but, them, dude. But yo, I was bummed at that show, bro. Uh-oh. What show? Fuck, that venue sucked, Yeah, bro. the venue was pretty. It was a Let me show you because I saw them in August too. Let me show you the video from August, cause so I, t- I, so took, I took my kid to the show in August. My too. son loves him too. Dude. Yeah, I saw, th- I saw a lot of. I got, I got so hyped. I got in the pit. Like, what is it I about never, I never them, get man? In the pit. 
they encompass everything we love about everything. I guess you know what it is. So, oh, oh, dude, I have as so I've been as I've been listening it. to you guys talk about like the way it was back in the day, like yeah, how like it, it, you couldn't make a slick record or, or like or if you you know okay. you could. So like I feel like what they have done is what people have always like genuinely felt. It's like and Angel does too. Just, why don't we just make the record we want to fucking make? We we can have hardcore songs or we can have this pop song. Like we, we can I love three eleven. Like we can, can love three. And I feel like I love it. They're the band that's like done that. Like when you talk about oh yeah, Angel Dust. When you talk about how the first set was like emo, the all first the pop part acoustic, of the set was like pop acoustic emo songs, and then they they finished it out with a bunch of hardcore songs. It was incredible. And it's like, man. I feel like that's where you know Angel Dust. Yeah, you know, isn't that the singer of of Turnstile was a drummer for the band yeah, yeah. before Angel Dust, yes, right? Uh, it was Angel Dust. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so like, hearing you guys talk about like when you were like you couldn't do anything, like if you made it had to be just like hardcore this, and punk only. Then you're like. No, nope, you got to stay such over a whack here. time, bro. Dude. Our sacrifice is what allowed for <laughs> yeah. turns out to happen. You, hey, you guys are the you guys are the Rosa yeah, Parks. Let me show you this. Let me, yeah, for real. Let me show you this video. This is what this is like. This is what a turns out show. Should okay, be, we're, bro. we're this is them. This is the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, Where's this at? In this is I, I never heard of this venue. It's called the Garden Amphitheater. Oh, was there. Yeah. He was you were there. there in August. I was there. Oh, we were there. It was my there. first live show since it's been done. Me too, bro. We're both there. I was my whole I brought family. My kid. my, look, my kids there. You I was on the kid. side of the stage, Ray Fletcher. That's so funny, dude. We just went. I just played to a Pennywise two weeks ago. Amazing venue. Your kids dude, I love a blast. the venue. My kids fucking loving it, bro. Yo, I was there. That's crazy. We we're I'm both right there. there. That was incredible. Yeah, that's a great you know what? Yeah, my kids freaking that, That's dude. adorable. So, why do you love them? Um, first of all, I feel like they are like who they are, mm -hmm. you know, and unapologetically, yes. unapolog but, but also super sincere. 100%. You know, they're positive. I love, I love the lyrics. Yeah. I love, um, their approach to it. I think that live it's, you can tell it's just like about the joint thing happening with 100%. the audience. Yeah. You Magical. know, like it's, oh. it's very much like all the principles that that we love about punk rock that brought us to punk rock are embodied by them without being shoved down your throat. You 100%. Know? 100%. So, so yeah. I think about that all the time. Some like, of the guys are straight, some of them are not. I love that too. In the band. When I was but younger, like, and that's just the vibe. Yeah, then yeah, yeah. the music is like on another level. On another level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this, this record was, uh, who produced it? Uh, the dude that did Eminem. Um, yeah, it is. Um, uh, I forgot his fucking Fucking... Uh, you, you told and, me, and how cool is he did it? They did it with that um, guy. It's yeah. so cool. It's like but no, uh, it, it's interesting to think about because when I think about when I was a kid and I was in high school, like GBH was my fucking band. No shit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hardcore. He but, saw but GBH I, and Foo Fighters love, just as many times. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. The, uh, Two favorite bands. Time. But um, <laughs> but I loved that saves the day. Stay what you are. Great record. Unbelievable. You know record. what I'm saying? Like like yeah. incredible. Like in, imagine. In, I feel like what they're doing is like almost in a sense not saying they're bringing GBH and Saves the Day together, <laughs> but like it's almost like they molded something along those lines to where a guy like me is like, yeah, you're doing both of the things I like. You know what I mean? Like I, I, lo yeah. I, I love it. hardcore and also love, you know, 311 and stuff I like love that. that. So I hear like, Doggy Dog in there. You know what I mean? Like you hear a lot, of, a lot of dope stuff and I think that's like what they're like doing what they're I, yeah i think i think they also like they i see that a lot like this 90s kind of resurgence of like this post hardcore thing like whether it's the 311 chili peppers or rage vibe whatever whatever you want to call that thing of like this post hardcore like it's going to be heavy but it's going to be like there's going to be space in it there's going to be like maybe some some melodies like yeah. but they're doing it so tastefully bro I know. it's yes. so tasteful and mm -hmm. it's and it's and it's and it's and it's catchy or or, or hooky without being corny you know Facts. what I'm saying? Corny. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's really hard to do, bro. It's yeah. hard. Like it anyone is. can write a nursery rhyme, you know. But it's like no one wants to listen to a nursery rhyme twice, you know. No. But it's like these songs. Like, I can't stop listening to record over and over again, to dude. It, you know. When we it's COVID, funny, that's dude. I listen to. I'm, I'm actually. I was wondering how you what you would think about that because I've love I, them. I've heard so many hardcore guys poo poo them a little bit, you know. Bro, I'm not. I yeah. love. It. I, I embrace it. It's, it's so I funny. It, bro, I bought t-shirts. When, when I bought the t-shirt too. I, bro, love I, love it. It. Love I knew he was going to say it. that record. Love dude, record. so many people have been saying that on here too. Like even older, way oh, yeah. older guys, way are like older people, yeah. checking it out. Like it, they encompass the kids like it too, dude. I mean, my son too. Yeah, but like, yeah, but you know, just like 
It's got the, the crowd balance. is like it's young kids Dude, too. We, we, the yeah, diverse crowd there. is very beautiful, diverse. man. Beautiful. All different Everybody ages. Everybody. Everybody. Kids in hip hop, skateboarding, everything. The shit that we all mm-hmm. love. And man. they just toured Chief Keef, I think, too, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they did? Yeah, they did. <laughs> so and they're doing Coachella, the same as Billy. They're doing like Lollapalooza, I just saw. Yeah. And, it, and I love it, man. I, I love it so much. I wish I could have seen him at that Garden app. That was fire. Because no, I've never right. heard show. of that venue. And right. dude, if I ever do a Cobra reunion, it's going to be at that venue. That venue is he so did, sick. There. Yeah, shout out to Chris there? with Pennywise yeah. two weeks yeah, with ago. Pennywise. Shout out to Chris Lisk who books it. He's awesome, old hardcore dude. We love Garden Amp. No barricade. Nice oh, that, stage. That venue is beautiful. So yeah. amazing. And wide, like a wide, wide, long stage. Yeah. Yeah, Max, I have a question for you since you are. Max, come on the microphone since you are 19. Max, what is it about Turnstile that you love? Because we're, t- we're talking about it as it does. I mean, you love them. You always playing them at your job. You don't want to talk about it? You don't have to. Well, because you're 19 and I'm 52. What, what do you think you like about them? I'm hyped. Uh, I like them. Uh, I like he doesn't them. love them. He doesn't love them like we no, do. No, yeah. I don't the know why like you hype more. me. I like, uh, you can't do that. I mean, it's okay. like, <laughs> if I said to you, tell me why you love, love Benighted. Like you have, like yeah, that's your music. You love, you love benighted. No, no, no. Tell me why you love fit for an autopsy. You like them. You turn you me listen, on. You turn me on to it them. It doesn't mean that you listen to it your own time. I I do like them. They're talented guys. I I mean, it's just not. You like them live? Yeah. Oh, they're great live. They're one of those bands like you go live. It's like whoa, that's fucking. Let's, awesome. let's rephrase that. What do you think about them? Mm. They're, they're great. Like they're talented. They play music very well. Each individual player is very good at their the oh, thing they way. do. Yeah. What do you think about the message? Do they have a message? Uh, yeah. I mean, it. You probably don't pay attention see, to lyrics. You know yeah. I mean, that's what it is. We understand the message, and they feel they just feel the vibe. Yeah. But when I was little, I looked for the message Me too. Me too. Though. Seven yeah, seconds, yeah, all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah. 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 Max, remember the one time Franz gave you his bass, and you held it while he did a backflip, and then gave yeah. it back to you on stage. That was, cool. that was tight. Sick. Really? Yeah. 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 Can anyway, you so, too? Max, you were great. Thanks for being a Jess Piccolo. We appreciate you. Piccolo, um, yeah. yeah, so Turnstile, amazing. <laughs> so that's the main band I've been listening to. That's probably the only band I'm listening to yeah. as far as something new. Oh, you know who else I really like? Heart Attack Man. I haven't heard that yet. Heart Attack Man. Oh, okay. bro. You haven't heard this record? We got to play. I'll play. I'll play for you. It's awesome. It's really great. So, yeah. okay. Okay. I know we get to go. So, okay. So, Midtown's 2022, and now you're playing. Oh yeah, we're doing the whole impetus for this is, is reunion. Prudential bro. Center. Yeah. Okay. So you want to hear the reunion story? So I'll yes, tell you please. real quick. Okay. Tell me. So in 2014, which was like during the height of like Cobras and Fall Boy, like that whole thing, a lot of people started taking an interest in like the bands that came before, you know. And so I love that. Yeah. So so Midtown people started being interested, like, oh yeah, you like Cobra Starship? You should check out his first band, Midtown. So people started listening to Midtown, That's which was dope. cool. And there was like a demand for like a Midtown show. Midtown's got to get better. You got to do a show. So we did a show that summer. Um, do you remember the Skate and Surf Festival? The Bamboozle ended up being Bamboozle. Yeah, yeah. So they resuscitated the Skate and Surf Festival as like a thing and it's like, it was a great scene fest. Cool. We did it. I felt like it was awesome. Great show. Done. Checked it off the list. Midtown reunion done. <laughs> so here's what happened though. Nobody had kids at the time. Well, Tyler actually had a kid but he was very little. He was like one years old. Uh, and now we're all like, you know, seven years later we all have kids and they're older and like our kids are like my, my kid told me he's like dad go play a show and i'm like i don't play shows anymore bros no no go play a show <laughs> go right now i'm like no i'm like dude it's his birthday word. so <laughs> what, a, what a thing to say like yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, go, go play a show <laughs> my kid's like i do shows <laughs> he's like you suck you don't even do shows anymore <laughs> Kids are so ruthless. They're so honest, man. <laughs> so, yeah. oh, so, so it really came from Tyler. Tyler's kid was a freak. He has the oldest kid. And Tyler's kid uh, was like a few years ago. I was like, Dad, I want to see a show. And he, so he called us up. He's like, dude, we should like, do it again before we get too old to never be able to do this again. And uh, I was like, it didn't really resonate with me because my kid had my kid at the time was like two and didn't ask. I actually purposely didn't try to show my kids any of my music stuff. And then one of my babies just blew up my spot. But wow, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But but then like <laughs> one day, so then so then so then I, so then I was like, oh, I know that feeling now. Like you're like, oh, you just want to make your kid happy and oh, like you want your kid to see it. Dope. So we were talking about it pre-pandemic, and the pandemic happened. It kind of went on the back burner. Um. And then, like, at the end of last year, when it looked like shows were happening again, you know, we're like, okay, maybe it'll be safe to book a show at the end of 2022. Let's go do that. Let's start working on that. You know, it's going to take us a minute to, like, learn the songs again, rehearse, find the venue, yada, yada. So we're doing that. We're doing this process. Um, And then Mikey Way hits me up, and he's like, hey, bro, is Midtown getting back together? And I'm like, 
what the fuck, dude? How how would you even know that? Like literally, it's just four of us would talked about. It. I'm like, who, who told you that? Like, is there a rumor going on? He goes, and so he called me. He's like, dude, I'm sorry, am I not supposed to know that? I'm like, no, it's fine. I just I, I don't I have no idea how you would have heard that. He goes, oh, I caught up with Tyler the other day. I'm like, oh, that's great then. That that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're not getting back together, but we're, I think we're gonna play a show. He's like, well, how would you feel about? doing some shows with Mike Kim. I'm like, dude, how would I Bruh. feel about it, bro? Come on. I'm like, what? I'm like, if I was on the fence about reuniting Midtown, I'm like, I'm not on the fence anymore, dude. You know? That's so, insane. So it was really funny. So the, this is, I told you I'm a troll. So check out what I did. So, <laughs> so I'm, uh, Mikey call Mikey tells me that, but then I don't do anything on it. Just cause I know how that shit goes when like artist to artist. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. Oh, I'm like, okay. I'm like, yeah, like, like have your agent call and like give me an offer oh, and like yeah. let me know that it's for real because you know when the agents and managers get involved shit doesn't happen you know it's true so so you ruin it yeah so I was just like I didn't want to get my hopes up or anybody's hopes up so I didn't say shit about it you know and like it took a month for like you know actually this actually be to be a real thing and then I spoke to it's Gally Gally's agent you know so I talked Gally talked to Gally I was like yeah yeah it's gonna happen this is what you're gonna do I'm like cool fuck yeah wait Matt Gally books Mike Kim oh yeah wow yeah yeah, yeah bro that's so cool. shout out to Mike Gally. Yeah, I used to book DIY shows and East oh, Coast. Okay. Mass concerts, baby, mass concerts. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I just found, I just found oh, them he was, he's back in OG. the day. Yeah, yeah man. Okay. He booked show. the Worcester, Worcester Palladium. Yeah, um, <laughs> Worcester. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just for you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I, I I hit the Midtown group chat and I'm like, guys, we got to talk. <laughs> like totally, like it's a bad thing. Like what's going on? I'm like. Listen, I got good news and bad news. I think it's better if we talk on the phone. Like, let's do a Zoom. So we got to all get on a Zoom. I'm like, listen, guys, I'm going to tell you the bad news first. Okay. Very somber. I'm like, we're not going to be able to do this Jersey headline show that we're planning on doing. He's like, wow, what's going on? Like, they thought something was wrong. Like, <laughs> someone die. Like, I'm like, I'm like, well, the reason why we can't do it is the good news is because instead of doing our own Jersey show, we're going to open up for My Chemical Romance at the Prudential Center. <laughs> wow, dude. <laughs> Think about it. And this. they're like, Gabe, you fuck. <laughs> that's massive. Especially being out from out there, dude. That's amazing. You are the yeah, troll man. king. Yeah, yeah. I'm the, I'm <laughs> Financial <laughs> centers, that's like, that's massive, dude. Yeah, yeah. That's and that, great. Then, then, Wait, where's that at? Jersey. 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 That's, oh, okay. that's like the... Oh, that's where the... Or it's, it's like the PNC, like, PNC like, Art Center. It's like the Staples Center called. type thing, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like um, 15,000, 20,000 people. Bro. Yeah. Massive. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we're doing five shows with my cam. And then the kicker was that... I thought we weren't going to be able to do our, our own Jersey show because we're doing the Mike Kemp show. Usually, you can't do you know you can't do radius clause. Radius whatever. clause, yeah. yeah, it's called the radius clause. You can't play in the same area if you already have another show. Depending on what they say, or if you're opening for a band, they want you as the mm. opener to bring value to the show. So if you're playing your own show, you're competing against a show that competing you're against, okay. yeah okay. But so if it sells out, you're good usually. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. You know, the, these shows have been sold out for two years. They don't fucking need. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they don't yeah. even town to sell any tickets. Yeah. So like, yeah, yeah, go put on your own Starland shows. So we put on a Starland show and we sold out like one within like an hour. And then we put up another one the next day. Sold out, which is that's that's the part that's the craziest to yeah, me because like I was like, cool, we're gonna play with my cam. Our kids are gonna think we're bigger than we've ever than we are because we're playing these arenas but like we're actually fucking you know like i don't know how the hell we sold so many tickets but i'm very grateful for that and surprised like in 22 years it took 22 years to sell that many tickets you know but it's it goes yeah what is the capacity there 2000 2200 that's beautiful man i'm excited that must feel awesome it feels very nice i'm very grateful for that and then you go out to east coast and you guys practice out there probably i gotta go out there yeah everyone else is out there already they're they're already practicing i gotta go i gotta get my shit together singers always last bro Dude, I gotta play bass too. I haven't played. Don't forget in Cobras, I didn't play an instrument. Oh, All I had to do was right. show up and sing some songs. Now I gotta play an instrument, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still play practice and sing? Stuff? No, bro, I don't practice at all. I was gonna say you gotta play and sing at the same play time. Play and sing at the same time. I gotta remember how the bass lines go. You I gotta, re- I gotta remember what rhythm is. Yeah. <laughs> you have to relearn all that shit, dude. You gotta relearn a lot of shit. Yeah, I got some work Damn. to do. I got some work to do. And yeah. it'll be fam- I'm sure your family's gonna come out. All that. Yeah, we'll have everyone come out. Kids yeah, will be, be so nice. hyped. Dude. I know. I haven't told him yet. Oh, you haven't told you? No, nah, because he's gonna be like he doesn't have a concept. He doesn't understand time yet, so yeah, he thinks yeah. days and years oh, are the same thing. So he's gonna be like bugging me for it every day. You know. Six, he's right? six, yeah. But dude, yeah. that's gonna be beautiful. Every family see that and out there in your Jersey, it's awesome, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Stoked for you, man. I'll tell him. I'll tell him. I'll be like, hey, dude, this weekend we're gonna go. I'm gonna play a show. He's like, cool, cool. <laughs> 
and the Prudential Center too. When is that show? In the fall? Yeah, that's gonna be in September. Oh yeah, he's gonna wow. see the Mike Kemp stuff before the Midtown Headliners. That's for sure. Yeah, wow, yeah. dude. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy. That's a great way to come back, play some shows, and that's what I'm saying. Wait, when dude. do you do if, the Mike Kemp stuff? Mike Kemp is in September. Fall? September. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. Okay. End of September, early Damn, October. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah, I saw we that. Go, I know. Guys, <laughs> 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 we're playing because we're playing the Forum out here too. Oh, okay. So we're doing like five. them. Okay. No, we're doing we're doing Jersey. Florida, two Texas shows, and uh, one LA show. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm gonna go to that. I'm gonna go to that one for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Make, sure. I came last year too. You went to it last year. I, I didn't go in because I got tickets from Max's friends from high school, and I brought them, and they started crying. They fell down the ground. Oh. They're like having convulsions. So I, get, I hand them tickets and got them into the My Chem show. Wait, the, what? Max's friends started crying. Yeah, because I got them tickets to My Chem. Those, those, their They're favorite like bands. Oh, and I got them tickets, and they were like, fell on the ground crying. They like, couldn't believe it. Oh wow! It was really nice. Thank you, That's Frankie, a, for that. It was really, really sweet, man. You're a nice yeah. guy. It was really nice, Thanks, man. I actually, yeah. So I'm gonna, I actually want to see him this time, though. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get like, we'll we'll like, that. Kids. We'll that. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So where can people find all your stuff? Just on Instagram, your, your name's on there. Like, I don't know. I don't use the internet. Okay, so. all right, cool, cool. <laughs> you don't check your DMs or check messages. I don't check nothing. Shit, no. Wow, I no. love this guy, no, man. I'm off, the, I'm off the grid, bro. He's, a, he's in his fucking zone. Dude. I love he's him. In his zone. I learned so much about you today. Before and after, all oh, this whole hangout has been beautiful, man. Because I, you think you know somebody, then you hang out with them and you connect with them, you know, years later. And it's just, it's, you're such a, yeah. so proud of where you are in your life, man. Thanks, bro. You're I like a real that. adult and shit. I'm a fucking yeah. re- it's really weird that I made it out the other side. I, I, honestly, I would not, I would, if I would have seen myself in my 20s, I would have bet against myself. <laughs> <laughs> so you got three kids, you have your own business, kids, you're I'm chilling, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like, you know, part of the reason why I stopped being an artist too is like, I just wanted my privacy back. You know, like, and like, that's kind of like, it's a weird thing, but like, there's a weird thing that happens. Even if you're not big, you're just like, you feel the pressure of like, you're being looked at, you know? And now no one's looking oh, at me. I'm dude. just, I'm just a dad. Yeah. I'm just a dad. And you love that. You're happy I with that. that bro. As a comedian. I love that. Exactly. I feel like I'm just like, can I say that? <laughs> you know, yeah. but, I, but I'm, normally I'm like, ah, fuck it. You feel like you're being watched all the yeah, time. Yeah, you just you feel know? like, you, yeah. you feel like you're uh-huh. being watched. And then I just have to be like, fuck it. And that's this the thing. That's the thing. The internet. The internet's so crazy, man. So you know? crazy. I mean, were you ever on that? Were you ever about the internet on it? Huge. Media? I mean, that's how Cobra Session blew up. We were like the biggest bad dude. Even Midtown. Midtown got signed when we when we had that third record that we were making. The reason why we got signed is because we were the first band to like use MySpace and put our songs up on MySpace. Yeah. So what happened was we did these two shows, one at the Ninja Factory in New York, one in Troubadour. And they're small venues, 500, but yeah. both sold yeah. out. Yeah. And we had two albums out at the time, so people knew the songs. But we had posted a new song a week before, and kids were singing the new song. So the labels were freaking out. They're like, how did they do that? You yeah. know, they didn't understand wow, the internet. You know? Yeah, no. So I understand the internet really well. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I use the internet for, for works of all time. I personally am just not on it. Because it just controls you. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. and I just, I'm just, trying to it really does. I'm it just trying to live my life as way. an autonomous individual. Yeah. You know? So this is a minute. Midtown account, probably. You guys promote. There's the a Midtown like, account. Rob Hit runs it. Yeah. Shout out Rob Hit. He's on there. Uh, like, I'll go on like once in a while, but I just I'm not like I'm not checking DMs. Like, because I, I, dude, I have I have enough like emails that I can't get to, bro. I, yeah. I do yeah. not need another source of like things I need to respond to right mm. now. You know. I love that, man. Yeah. I love where you're at. I love what you represent. I love everything. It's he's, crazy. He's a whole vibe. Yeah, everything about it. It's, just, I, I, it's amazing, man. Because you Thank think you, you know bro. somebody, then you sit down with them like this, and it's just yeah. beautiful, man. Thank you, bro. I appreciate I'm, you being I'm, here, man. I'm glad. I'm glad to have this talk, and you know, awesome. loved our pre-talk, guys. Yeah, me too. The, yeah, the yeah, pre-talk. Yeah, the pre-talk. We're on the same, about, we're on the same page, the same page <laughs> with life. Oh, yeah. Well, thank yeah. you for being here. Um, you have any more questions for Mr. Pell Lacey? Let me check my notes. Yeah. No, I was gonna say, like, when you talk about the MySpace stuff, that's so sick. The main was like that too. Yeah, yeah, they sure, hopped, for sure. hopped on the MySpace. Did uh-huh. you ever tour with them? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. What band? Great guys, the main. My, the main. my homies the homies. back home in uh, yeah. Arizona. Great guys. Yeah, great remember the guys, starting man. line? That was a pretty big band. Uh huh. Yeah. They're they're on drive through. That's mm-hmm. right. Starting yep. line. I forgot about well, they uh, were doing uh, too. I think. Alistair. Uh, oh, dude, it's funny. I was thinking you about that earlier because the, Alistair was on drive through. They were a Chicago yeah. band, but what's interesting about them? I actually thought they were East Coast. Uh, Chicago, some people. Oh, you think it's called the artist Coast. group? The artist group, it's called. Yeah, tag, tag. But, um, my company. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, but but Alistair, the singer from Alistair, I think moved to Japan and like became a Japanese like artist or something. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. I think he like learned perfect Japanese and he like was on TV in Japan. Yeah. And it's funny you mentioned because I was literally thinking about it the other day. I'm like, I'm like, huh? It's weird because I kind of knew that I knew him, but I never spoke to him. And like during that time, there wasn't the internet the way it is now. But yeah, like yeah. his story, I bet is so fascinating. I would love to just know his story. Uh huh. No, because yeah, I I just remember them for the one record, and obviously. Drive through would make
you you did you were you featured on an Eve song. Yes. Make it out of this town. Eve. Yes. Fucking Eve. Eve fucking man. Rough Eve, Riders, bro. bro. Rough Riders. Really? Yeah, 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 That's yeah, yeah. sick. Yeah, 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 yeah. How the hell that happened? What year was that? 2013. That was the height of Kerber Starship, bro. I was a, I was a fucking international pop star. Dude. Wow. Put the BS movie on the hey, records. Wow. Yeah, they, 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 uh, <laughs> I love I, Eve. I dude, that's fire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, Eve, was, Eve is a shit, dude. She's so cool. She came to a Cobra show. Wow, yeah, yeah. dude. And then yeah. you, you were like a Beats One radio oh, host. I know too. how I met her. I met her. Um, we both like were did this like s- there was like some kind of like what kind of fucking show? Some music show where we were both judges. It was a pilot. It never got made, but we were both like okay. casted as as like judges for it. And that's okay. how we met. She came to Cobra Show, and then I featured on her record. I think so that's what sick. It was, yeah. Did you know he? But I haven't talked to her in years. Uh, Nicole Schlesinger. Schlesinger. Oh, you yes. had one of those. Did you know that? She nah. she sang live for us at an award show. Yep, was a VMA. We had, we had a, what? A VMA is VMA yeah. yeah. That's yeah, sick. Yeah. All right, Chappelle, chill I've out. got, dude, I, I, Bruno Mars I worked with on. He, he wrote a bunch of songs with me, dude. Like, wow. Yeah, I've got Holy to, shit. I've gotten to do like, like incredible things that I'm so grateful for. Like, What about some more hip hop artists besides Eve? Uh, Mac Miller, like I said. Yeah, that's yeah, so yeah. sick. We worked, we worked a lot with Travi from Gym Class. Love yeah. Travi. Shout out to yeah, Travi, yeah, man. Yeah, Love yeah, you. Yeah. And you were Beats One Radio host too for a second? I did. We, yeah, that was, uh, I was doing that towards the end of Cobras. And then I also did it once I moved out here, actually. That wow. was, I was the only one who was allowed to go from New York to LA. That uh, was a lot of fun. And then when I was 17, a MTV show you did? Oh, yeah. You got all the, all the shits. That was, that, was, <laughs> that was interesting. That was an interesting one. I was, um, I was really fucked up when I filmed that. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> damn, man. Yeah, you've. Your amazing journey, man. I know, you I've, had so much. I've had a journey. It's a beautiful journey, <laughs> journey, though, man. Thank you, bro. I love it. I love it. Just follow your heart, and then you really want to do music despite you had fucking a 4.0, and you're a genius, and then you just quit uh, <laughs> and just yeah. went for it. I love it, man. Thank you, bro. Are you using stuff that you learned from Rutgers in your life now? Good question. I mean, I'm definitely using stuff that I've learned as an artist now. I think yeah, that, right. like... Yeah, more from traveling in the world. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, like, just, you know, just even, like, with what I do with working with young artists, I feel like the most important thing I can give them. I feel a lot of people can do the business side, but like, I feel like having been an artist, I understand them on a different level, you know? Yeah. And I think that like, you know, the <coughs> highs and lows of it all. Right. And one thing that's really like kind of overlooked in the business is just like the mental health of artists. Right. And, and I think that for me, I know that I suffered the most when there was just a level of pressure and stress that was unmanageable. And just yeah. figuring out where that comes from and making sure that a lot of it comes from the business. It's a fucking hard business and it's stressful. Yeah. It's a stressful life. So, uh, you know, my approach to it, and, and I really just try to encourage other business people to be like this too, is like, don't pressure your artists unnecessarily. It's a bad business decision because mm-hmm. if you're an artist, even if you get them to do what you want in the short run or they, or they make more money in the long run, long term, they're not going to be happy and it's not going to be a, a long term sustainable idea. That's beautiful. You know? yeah. I love that, man. Yeah. I think everybody needs to fucking hear that. A hundred percent, man. Nobody talks about that yeah. in the no business, one. right? No, no, man. no one. Well, that's the blessing that he has. You get chewed up and spit been, out, man. Exactly. You know, been, being on both sides. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but wait, yeah, you independent major, MTV, radio, no radio, no success. Yeah. Huge record, record doesn't, you know, you've been through it all, dude. And you just got, I think the other thing that's really important too is you have to like take a minute to define what success means to you because everyone has a different idea of what success is, you know? Mm-hmm. And for me, it's just like, and these are the kind of people that I to work with, which is, you know, people that just love what they do and want to try to find a way to make a living doing what they do. When people are just like, I want fame, you know, or I want to be the biggest. I don't connect to that. You want to be the biggest? You want to be the best? Like, that's cool. Like, that's like a level of competition I don't have. You yeah. know, like, like that's the kind, like to get to that level of competition, it's, it, it gets dirty. It gets dirty at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to play clean, you know. So I love it, man. So, yeah. Fuck, Gabe. Thank you for being here, man. Yeah, thanks I, for I, this I, is awesome. I love and appreciate all the stuff you put out into the world, and yeah. appreciate you being here. Pleasure and meeting you, dog. Crazy. This is Meet awesome, you, man. man. Yeah, hell yeah. And the kids are gonna be stoked. They'll be like, Gabe, from Midtown, it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> yeah. You, you is, do podcasts is, that much? I don't do uh, them at all, actually. Yeah. Is this your first one? I did uh, Finn McKinty. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did Finn? Oh yeah, Punk Rock NBA. Uh huh. Punk Rock. Shout him out. Shout out to that kid. He's great. So that's the only one you've done so far. Yeah. Wow. I'm done, fucking yeah. honored, man. Yeah. I'm honored, I think bro. I did an interview for this. This is there's, there's a, a, a something coming out called the Last Scene documentary. I did an interview for yeah, that. Yeah, sorry about yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I haven't done a lot of podcasts. Well, thanks for being in my kitchen with me today, dude. Yeah, thank right. you for inviting me. Thanks I'm for pulling up, Chappelle Lacey. Yeah, of course, Hell yeah. yeah. Love having I know you guys. When he told me, I was like, yeah, I'll stick around. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye guys. Right. Hey guys, thanks for listening. Um, please rate, review, uh, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet to this podcast, please do that. And whatever platform you are listening to this on. I'm glad you found me. 
You can rate me and review me on there also. So thank you guys sincerely for the support. I cannot wait for you guys to hear the next one.